I am I am not able to stream. I am oh, recording no. the episode's name is Forsaken Drifters. Perfect. Future Kisty will have to retitle that, but I did turn on the recording now. So it's all good. I uh I am not forsaken. I am the genius. I have the tiger. <laughs> it's the eye of Bahamut. Uh, what were we doing? <laughs> I'll go there in just a moment. I'm gonna. I got. Last I remember, we were chilling by the gate, and there like some large, like stomping, big, scary sounds were headed toward the gate. And I know that. Uh, Gideon was very concerned with whatever might be coming because he was warning the city guard. So yeah, oh so, yeah, and he told us to get, to get out and not worry about it because we don't want to be in the middle of a fight between two gods. Yep, and we also we, we also ran into an old friend. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, and I, well, I also was going to say I think we had, the Our... last thing we saw was this guy, but I don't remember who he was. Um, a little priest dude over here. Is that the guy from um, Ravnica? Or not Ravnica, but um, Innistrad? Mm. So are, you guys... Oh, go ahead. go ahead. I was just saying, are are we in like a different town or are we in like the... Oh, yeah, we're in a different place. town. Okay. Right. Yeah, so if you guys are ready, I'll go ahead and go through everything and uh, right. catch everybody up here. Send it. Okay. Do it. So last we left off, uh, you guys had traversed this forest and this nicer area of the underworld that you found. You found a strange person with a golden mask. Uh, you guys went to confront him, but he couldn't really communicate very clearly as you guys tried to investigate what he was doing here. Uh, in the meantime, you guys spotted a group of similarly dressed people in the masks uh, that were moving in on a little area, like a abandoned fort uh where you guys came into a uh, or Nichek flew over and warned everybody that something was happening uh Nichek in the meantime got hit with some attacks and fell down uh, i think that's when he went unconscious uh where you guys headed in to take out the people uh and you guys uh went to knee's aid uh as he woke up he had an effect from his death mask that uh started to take effect he wasn't able to save from it uh he had some temporary madness uh but you guys were able to snap him out of it uh where you guys confronted gideon uh, who led you to this nearby town to warn them of all that's happening you guys also heard the stomping in the distance uh seemingly something was coming uh so you guys headed here to warn him uh as you were leading off gideon to uh get in touch with the proper people uh, you guys ran into uh, an old friend from Ravnica, uh, Falish, had obviously died and somehow ended up in the Therian underworld. Uh, you guys had told her that she'd look into what uh, had happened. She told you guys that a uh, someone took over the Azoria Synod in the time you guys have been gone, uh, a Vidalkin, and uh, he seems to be pretty like a bad guy. Uh, you guys had just finished talking to her specifically between uh, Una and Nichek were kind of communicating with her at the at the time. She since walked off. You guys were going to figure out what comes next. Um, I will preemptively say that your characters would probably realize that this is a mostly safe area aside from what was ever going on out there in the woods. Uh, this would probably be a good opportunity for a long rest should you choose to take it because uh, the rest of the underworld is quite dangerous judging by the map and all. Oh yeah, so there's uh, two things I wanted to point out um, that Gideon told us. It, it was Gideon, right? Gideon, um, yeah. Yeah, or three things. So we gave Gideon his memories back. Um, Correct. All right. When he regained his memories, he recalled um, being unsuccessful in fighting Nicol Bolas um, alongside 
um, a few other planeswalkers, um, namely um, the guy we knew in Ravnica. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not very great with names. <laughs> the, the lady from Kaladesh. Um, oh, yeah. And and the the lady we saw in Innistrad, right? Yeah, I think he mentioned uh, specifically Jace, uh, Jace, Chandra, and Nissa, and uh, Liliana is the people Liliana. he named. Yeah. <laughs> Darth yeah. said something under his breath about the Liliana thing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> he did mention that. Also, uh, another thing I was going to point out is that in that chat you had with him he also uh when he regained his memories he was talking about his uh friend elspeth which seemingly is another planeswalker that had gone missing the last he he knew of it but yeah <laughs> was there two other things you said right <laughs> yeah that was um that was the main things with that oh yeah um he said that the uh, best way to get back to where we're trying to go is either to truck across the land or to pay um the the ferryman Aetheros yeah mm -hmm. um and the last thing was that oh yeah we killed half of the the dudes we're trying to get out of here shoot <laughs> <laughs> answering questions yeah, which uh, with some clarification and the some of the stuff that we had learned before, uh, we now know that remember that the uh, the body and the soul would be separated, and the soul would be one place, and then the body would be used by like the masked one to do stuff. So basically, we've destroyed the body, but the soul is still out there. Mm -hmm. So his essence still exists, but now he's like we don't have a body to put him in. <laughs> so that we got to figure that out and he he did give it a name uh, of Eidolon is what they called it Zix is thinking that we build him an artificial body with Blackwell so I mean, that's yeah, we, could give him, we could give him a weird body hey let's make a Karn 2.0 <laughs> <laughs> So that said, you guys are in the town right now. It uh, seems relatively safe uh, for where you are at currently. Uh, what do you guys do? So we're pretty close to dawn if you guys want to want to rest. But at the same time, some something is marching over here. So we could risk running into that if we stay. Well, we could... Also, we could also go back to the boats. I'd like to push the boundaries of what's possible with the boat. If it's based on imagination, I think I have an idea. But I'm worried that if we go that route, maybe we won't have time to rest before complications could arise. Mm. I can go for a oh, uh, what? So what all does Zix share with us? Um, I mean, after coming back, I'll, I'll share everything that I learned from uh, Jura. I think I would leave out that, that I'm supposed to tell, give Liliana Vess a message for Jura. I probably wouldn't say anything like that. Just understanding that, like, Ni nee has complicated emotions there. Um, but everything else, I think I would, uh, I would pass on. Just the jura asked that we talk to jace and the other leaves of ghost fire he wants us to let him know that he failed to retrieve the sword um but luckily we've got it um and he wants us to tell them what has happened to him uh he plans on staying here and defending this place i think me would just be avoiding do if I walk close to the trees around here, do they start to like wither or like not? They actually do. They actually do not. Oh, that's good. This is good. <laughs> I mean, you're kind of like exuding undeath, and we're in a world of death, so I don't know. I don't know how much damage you could really do here. 
Well, yeah, everything's already been dead. Oh, this shoes these shoes are freaking damn too. I'm gonna get out of here. Donwell's gonna be like, I haven't eaten in three days. <laughs> Maybe you should have fun climbing a tree and stuff, man. I don't know if you're gonna be able to do that anytime soon. I'd definitely well, climb the tree first thing. I think uh <laughs> I mean, I honestly, I think Nee would like test it, like get close to a tree, see that it doesn't, like nothing happens, but then like still just be avoidant, just in case, like, because he doesn't really understand. He knows, but he doesn't get it. You know, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that like Nee would probably. If he doesn't know anything about like that Liliana's somehow involved and like he they there's not much like for him here besides like helping Zix. So like me, I think would probably just be chilling by this statue here in the center and just like sitting in front of the statue trying to look okay. trying to look for a rest i will point out too that um i didn't put them on the map because roll 20 would go slow but there is lots of people around this is a pretty pretty full up town what should we like do, find do, a... do they are they, they do cool not. okay they're, they're cool <laughs> okay should we find an, an inn or a tavern or something to stay at tonight and then Leave it first light, or is there light and dark here? Oh. Um, which... Well, like I can tell that several hours have passed. Um, like it should be, like real late right now. Like it's it's we're right we're like hours before dawn. And we can uh, right we could get started on the journey and then sleep in shifts and just have people do take watches on the road. Or on the well, on the way. Are we taking the road, or are we taking a boats again? I think I'd like to take the air. You it, just see Una kind of go wide-eyed, like what? I don't know. We haven't tested the limits of this thing yet. I'd really like to see how far it can go. If we want to set out now, I can go ahead and try. Well, how about this? Let's let's get some rest just in case, so that way if I can. Need to, I can polymorph myself or someone if they need to be, you know, because I can only do it one more time today. Well, if even if you have polymorph, it's not going to be enough to take us across the land. No, but it's enough to get us out if shit hits the fan. Just saying, we're very good at running away from things. That's true. That is, we are we are pretty good at running away from things. <laughs> we ran from a fucking dragon. Which I well, have that... to say, I'm very impressed we actually fucking did that and lived to tell the tale. Oh, remember when we ran from we ran from like a whole group of things, like <laughs> demons and ogres and stuff, and we got that tank. That's true. Well, with the tank oh, yeah. we actually got to do some shit. Yeah, but we teleported oh, out of there almost immediately. Yeah. I still have both my fourth levels. Well, I used one because I had to, I changed knee into a, a bird. So yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as resources go, I'm fine. The uh, if we're like just as far as out of character, the um, I don't think Zix is tired per se, but I do realize that if we don't sleep, then we can get tired later. Well, Una did take a nap on the way here, so she's pretty good. I mean, she could use all her spell slots to get that fourth back, I think. Yeah, we all got we all got to rest on the we all got to rest on the boat over boat ride over. Mm -hmm. um, so it stands to reason we'll get another rest riding the boat back. We're obviously going to run into more trouble, but at the same time, if we stay here, we might run into even greater trouble. Now then, let's go. Me is feeling very unlucky right now. That's all I know. Because he used all your lucks. <laughs> I totally used all his lucks. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, if anything, uh, well, we could take some naps and get a little sleep on the ship. Let's go. Yeah. All right. I vote ship. 
guess uh, we could head that path, that whatever way we took to get here, we could just head right back that way and go to that same spot by the river. I want to um, make sure I we do this in the water just in case it doesn't work. I wasn't with you guys when you guys encountered the um, adventure, right? I think you were a little ways away. I think you were looking on the rooftop as that was happening. Yeah, because they were looking for the inventor. I was looking for the hideaway or something like that. Yeah. Um, no, I think that was just uh, Una and Zix and yeah. that did that. So uh, as we're walking out, I'd probably ask Una what was up with all that. And then I would assume it was a previous uh, girlfriend. Uh, no. Uh, let's just say, uh, it was when, remember when that thing came out about me hating goblins? Around that time, she was around. She worked for the asshole. Okay. So that's who you guys were looking for that day. (laughs) Yeah. So, so she's down here now. Mm-hmm. And apparently she's dead. She's okay, not happy so with you me. I can say that. that. Oh, well, the last I saw her, she was getting arrested. So, um, not my fault. Okay. Okay, yeah. That's look, look, well, look, I know I have a thing about killing. All right. Well, let it. Look, I'll stay right now. Avril and I have an agreement. I'm not to kill anyone who helps us anymore. Well, we didn't. We didn't kill her. She she got arrested and then apparently was tried for crimes and executed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I she did say something a little disconcerting that you guys should probably know. Uh, remember that goblin that we took down and we turned in for yeah. the bounty? Uh, he's, yeah, Krinko, he's out. He uh, apparently what? he got off. He got off all charges. She was arrested oh, no, no, no. For providing. <laughs> she was arrested for providing weapons to Krinko. And I guess killed for it, but Krinko, the person she provided weapons to, was not guilty. I don't know how it works. The legal system in Ravnica is a little shady. The rich but, get uh, richer. I guess so. That's Krinko right. has connects. Una's hair yeah. just turned bright blue and is flaming hot right now. Remember, so. uh, she she told you that directly, Una. Oh yeah. That, she... uh, Krinko got out. Oh yeah. Yeah, think... because uh, because the 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 cops are now being. I'll uh, be honest. Over. My Rock. brain does not recall the last like ten minutes of the last session. So, but Una's <laughs> hair would be like that the second she heard that. Oh so, yeah, Krinko Kring- could be uh, could be a problem in the future if we end up going back to Ravnica and he sees one of us. So just be on the lookout. Uh, I, I don't no, think no, too he many issues. he sees me. He's a fucking dead goblin. That's what's gonna happen. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, isn't he just like a small time crook on Ravnica, like? I don't even think he's a major it's player, is he? Krinko is um, working with pe- these people that are supplanting uh, leaders in the guilds, because we know that mm-hmm. several of the people that have already done this are planeswalkers, and a few of them have allied with Nickel Bolas. Mm. Well, I guess that'll be a future us problem. I'm going to say it right now. I'm killing the fucking goblin. And Avril can't get mad mean. at me for it this time. <laughs> No, this one's fair. He kind of does it. Good. So, uh, what's what's your plan once we get back to this boat, Zix? Well, I'm gonna see if I can make the boat fly. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we this we don't really know how far we can go with it. So, if it, imagination dictates the rules, let's uh, let's see how far we can take our imagination. So instead of a water ship, uh... you're thinking airship, aren't you? Yeah, I'm very yes. imagining that he isn't going to summon a tr- uh, a ship full of trees. Well, what if you tre- summon a ship with wings? Were... Maybe it was kind of the trees were kind of peaceful though. I like the trees. I'm not gonna lie, that was, I wasn't that was, saying wasn't the trees were bad. I wasn't saying it was bad. I'm just saying it's probably not what Zix is thinking. No, not this, partic- not this not this particular mind. time. I need about. something. We'll see. You'll, you'll, you'll see. I, you all, you all know I hate the water. So if this gets us in the air, I'm all for it. Little garden, right there in the middle of the 
<laughs> got some trees, maybe a little sheep, flowers. Admiral, stop trying to influence six <laughs> seven. He's trying to trying to like influence my subconscious to where I'll put trees in there by. <laughs> Like just, just by osmosis, when I wake up, Avril's beak is going to be right next to my ear, just whispering, tree, bush, flowers. The big trees, the little trees. The big trees, the little trees. I'm going to be in the background. I'm dryad. <laughs> Just a, it's a giant dryad that just looks like she's swimming through the air and so, we're right on her back. So uh, I, I have a question. Do you guys want me to turn into a giant eagle and carry all of us over to where the water is? That way we don't have to walk through possibly, you know, whatever could be coming this way. How far is it? I, mean, I don't remember how far we are from the shore. I wouldn't complain about a ride. You guys uh, recall that it wasn't it wasn't very far. It was a few few hundred feet, but it wasn't like relatively all that far. Okay. Well, can we judge how close or far the sound is that's like we were hearing while we were running away? Yeah, so as you guys like kind of come up to the area where you were at, um you uh do not hear the sound anymore. However, you do see that all of the bodies that were laying on the ground, uh, whatever remained of the bodies anyway, is completely gone. Uh, the uh, da, da, da. oh, that's never a good sign. Blackwell, Nichek, and Avril. You guys are Blackwell, Zix, and Avril. Sorry, you guys notice that there is footprints in the mud or, like, the dirt area just down here. Uh, yeah. So they were either retrieved or revived. And I wouldn't put it past them to be revived in a place like this. Yeah. Um, regardless, that isn't our battle right now. Nope. Um, if you guys would like, I can just get us some horses real quick. We're only a couple hundred feet away. We can walk. Oh, yeah. Quick. Yes, okay. Time in Naruto run. <laughs> Running time, let's nah. go. Scrongle bonus. <laughs> oh, my, uh, big party token there. <laughs> I imagine me check Naruto running. Blackwell scrongle bongusing. Avril running like Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the long strides, high knees. But with the arms up in the air and like, yeah. It's over like, doing like, like a cloud run. It's like sword to the side. <laughs> Una running like a freaking <laughs> athletic <laughs> sprinter. <laughs> uh, so your fucking nose is right above the ground. <laughs> you guys, uh, it takes a few minutes to get there, but you guys are uh, hastily moving towards the the area where you guys had bottled up the ship, actually. So you guys have it in a bottle right now. But you are able to reach the shore of the River Tartarix. So, Zix, you have the honors. I'll uh, go over to Avril. Do you mind if I uh, get the bottle from you? Wait, do I have it? Yeah, I think you were the last one to have it. You have all the all the bottles to contain it. All right, it slides down the tree that he was like halfway up climbing. <laughs> <laughs> Hands you the bottle, and then he's just like, How much fruit should I grab for the trip? And just starts climbing the tree again. I'll, uh, I'll grab the bottle, I'll walk over to the edge of the water, I'll throw it in the water, but I'm imagining the boat uh, flying, hovering over the water. All right, you want to describe what this boat looks like as you're imagining it when you throw the this bottle? I That's think the one that Zix, you designed, right? Yeah, I think as uh, as Zix goes to imagine the bottle, um, just like earlier when he um, like was very persuasive with the uh, the masked person that we had found, 
I think it's a jumble of all these experiences and thoughts and emotions coming from uh, the these souls that are trapped within the blade, and uh, it kind of ends up uh, pushing out an amalgamation of ideas that's not exactly all my own. Um, but as the the bottle crashes or smashes on the top of the water and it releases the boat, it forms into it looks like a almost like a Viking longship, but it's covered in uh, scales of a dragon, like it's formed from the skin of a dragon. It's got two dragon wings on either side. Uh, they're kind of flapping. The, sh the ship strangely stays really stable, floating above the water, but the wings are flapping as if it's staying hovering. Uh, atop it is a throne, um, what looks to be a small smithy and some training dummies. Uh, with uh, two hatches that lead below, which would go to what uh, Zix is imagining, um, like a galley and, and rooms to polite stay and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, so do you see this long red boat appear kind of slightly hovering just above the water uh, where you, you throw the bottle? Uh, guys... Ooh. Yeah. They oh, make it oh, aboard oh. the ship. Um. Yeah. So where uh, I'm gonna take you guys over to the map real quick. Um. What's uh, what's this path looking like? As you guys, uh, you basically can just will will this uh, ship to go as you please. Um. <laughs> Um, honestly, I think if we're in the air, um, I don't think Zix would give it a lot of thought. I think I would just like hover the boat straight up and then just head directly in the direction of where I sense the, the other presence. Like, I guess it got for, it got closer, the further West I would go. So at this point I would just point the point, the, the boat West and try to stay in contact with the sword to see if the presence was growing stronger. Okay. The trees. Uh, yeah, I uh, to be honest, I was thinking of like a sailing ship with like, like maybe some like cloth wings or something with some tech. I honestly, this isn't, this isn't what I, what I it's originally warm. imagined. Why is it warm? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think there was more than one person having a hand in this. I think it's nice. It's just a little disconcerting when the when the deck kind of moves a little bit under your feet, like it's not quite solid. It's not really wood. It's like you can almost feel its skin. I think it's breathing. <laughs> I bet it'll be careful with my fighter if that happens. Just don't put your hands close to the mouth. <laughs> and he's like this, this, leaning this... over the edge, like oh, mm. okay. Did you make the ship a dragon? Uh, I, I think so. I think so. It kind of, a little bit, yeah. I, Dude, you're awesome! <laughs> Una's like super excited right now. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a dragon before. You, we, a... What do you mean you've never seen a dragon before? We ran away from one, remember? Like literally yeah, it killed, it a couple of Brecken. days ago. Oh, that's yeah, right. But then it was just got, I mean, it was there for like six seconds and then got through 400 feet away. I didn't really have time to study it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think you studied enough for your imagination. Um, weren't we in a courtroom with uh, Niv Mizzet? I was going to say, that's right. Pretty... Niv Mizzet. But Niv Mizzet's a little different. He doesn't look like this. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He is. I'm, I'm trying not to think very much about what the ship looks like. Because this is kind of this is kind of weird, even for me. <laughs> yeah, well, this is freaking awesome. I love it. A lot going on right now. So as you uh, start to kind of like halfway uh, command this thing to move in your mind, you feel this sudden upward thrust, like uh, as if mm. an elevator was going up above your uh, below your feet. Uh, you feel this thrust upwards before you look down, and you can see this 
uh, little town you were in getting smaller and smaller and then just covered by woods. Uh, aside from the temple tops that hang out above the, the canopy. Uh, you can get a pretty good... What's that? <laughs> I was like, as we fly away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so you can see that um, the a pretty good aerial view of the 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 underworld area that you're in. Uh, you see this, like, almost, like, faint golden aura around this entire area. Uh, immediately beyond that point, uh, there's... It just looks desolate and barren. Uh, kind of a bleak landscape. Uh, but just ahead, you can see these pillars of stone that come out of the the uh, wasteland below you, and these massive chains uh, are coming from seemingly an infinite space above you into the ground of this area. Uh, I'll show you a picture here. Uh, good old sky chains. Possibly going on. Ah. Oh, that's, that's not disconcerting or worrying at all. That's ominous. These yeah, things... whatever holds chains like that, that's not great. These chains seem to hold down everything inside of the, from what you can see of the underworld from where you're at. Uh, they span in every direction. Uh, but uh, you guys uh, can see uh, just up ahead, you see like a red glow as uh, you look beyond the pillars, but that's about as far as you can see uh, from where you're at uh, towards towards the east. Uh, to the south, you can see these giant mountains rise out of the ground. Uh, seems like this uh, glow kind of meanders down to those mountains as well. What do you think would happen if I broke those chains? Are you, want, are you really wanting to tempt me with that idea? Something's falling. I mean, if we had time. No. We kind of got stuff to do, but like maybe after we finish what we're doing, we can come back. We can try. What do you think these are connected to? I don't know. That's what I'm curious. Do you think it falls down? Or do you think it falls up? We're in the underworld. How much lower can you go? I mean, oh god, do you make me think of the conundrum of is down up and up is down? I I don't even what right? Ugh. Who knows how this place works? <laughs> and I is there? Apart. Is there any way that I can do like some sort of like history check or something like that to like think back to time in school where we like he was a straight A student? Yeah, where we like maybe talked about like the hells or something like that to where like there is more than one layer sometimes. Uh, yeah. So story you've heard of? I'm gonna have you roll a religion check. Uh, okay. For that. Yes. Hell yeah. Nice. 21. All right. All right. Uh, well, that's a Greek thing. Or we're in Greek. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dottie had an idea. It's also <laughs> the balance of Ragnarok as well. Chains are connected. Uh, Pen River. What's up? Would, like, would. I be underneath the presumption that those chains all seem to go toward the central location and maybe be binding something underneath the underworld. Uh, so they definitely seem to be binding the land uh, itself. Uh, they appear to like not go to a singular point in the sky. They just kind of come down from nothing into the ground. Uh, they give oh, us it's like, more like they come from the sky and then they're just all over the place. All over the place, yeah. Okay, yeah, because in the picture, it looks like they all went to, like, one location, kind of. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, oh, that sounds like the binds of, bounds of Tartarus, where mm -hmm. the gods have titans trapped underneath, you know, underneath, say, underneath hell. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's just yeah, this kind yeah. of, like, <laughs> yeah, they just kind of give this oppressive vibe to the to the landscape, uh, is kind of the gist you get from it. Um so as far as uh, what you can recall from your classes, you you remember these uh, physi physiology and uh, these uh, 
these classes you took uh, where you studied before a test, uh, you think back to some of the books you kind of skimmed over, kind of through the side because they weren't completely related to what you were uh, testing on uh, following the following day. However, uh, you do recall seeing something about uh, this plane of Theros. Uh, Wait, how do we end up in Elysia? What? Is that the yeah. direction that that we, you decided to go Yeah, we went the the other way, but the the whatever presence I was sensing started getting weaker, so we turned back uh, the other direction because it felt stronger that direction. Okay. Yeah, because I was because <laughs> I was like I thought we went yeah, that way. way. <laughs> yeah, no, that was the that was the point where the boat went and then pivoted, and which caused Nietzsche to fall down and have uh, an issue. And then we found out that I couldn't clean him any longer. I pooped. <laughs> I tried to be polite. <laughs> you guys me if I could do it. I was trying to be polite, not you know, shame a boy. Appreciate so, it. with your your twenty one in your religion check, uh, you did recall seeing that there are such afterlifes, underworlds, heavens, all kinds of things that do consist of layers. Uh, however, from what you've seen about Theros, uh, kind of unfamiliar with the plane at the time, uh, it didn't. you don't recall seeing anything about uh, layers to this one. Aside from uh, the the three layers that consist of the, the, the plane itself, which is the uh, the material plane, the underworld below it, and the uh, realm of Nyx above it. Um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh, so, yeah. yeah, that reminds me. Mm-hmm. Now that we're uh, we're on the way, uh, apparently uh, Jura knew Liliana. Yep. What? Uh? Yeah, he gave me some message saying that he, uh, that I guess he wasn't going to see Liliana Voss anymore and was, uh, wanted to give his, I guess, the well wishes and f- caring to her. So apparently she worked with the other good planeswalkers, meaning that she isn't. Um, as cut and dry as we thought. Uh, Nothing ever is. Yeah, she does seem to be a complicated person. I mean, we've seen her make a deal with the devil. She taught at our school and seemed to be very nice and nurturing. And then now she's uh, like, I mean, my every experience I had with Jura was that he was very, like, good. And apparently they had some sort of connection. So So people want to see them or expect them to be, you know? I guess so. Like maybe that deal with the devil wasn't what we thought it was. Well, also it's like it's been a year since we saw her uh, from school. So people change. I mean, look at me. I used to be a train wreck. Now I want to roll an inside check on Zick. On the what? <laughs> on Zick. Okay. Do does does me hearing that oh, conversation nice. does anything like trigger nice. within me knowing that my face is Liliana's brother? I would say that would be up to to you. However, you if you need check taking in that information, but Liliana Vest. As far as the name definitely stands out to you, it is a uh, you make the connection. Yeah, like do do I think that um do I think that the deal that she made like had more to do with her brother than it did her? Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you know that this mask is, uh, deeply related with Liliana. Mm -hmm. Uh, you may be able to, 
connect yourself to the mask in a way to try to glean some information. Uh, however, that may come with unintended consequences. You haven't ever tried that before. So it is a possibility. But if you want to try to uh, connect to this uh, entity that seems to uh, somewhat reside, well, it, I mean, it is part of this entity that you keep having these visions about, uh, you most certainly could try if you'd like to do that. <laughs> uh, Otherwise, well, I'd, say, I'd say you probably wouldn't know too much about that as as knee check <laughs> yeah that's that's fair i was just wondering if like the mask was like also listening sort of thing you know yeah yeah like because i feel like when i haven't like it's also like just shown me like flashbacks before yeah so um yeah i guess if it if it doesn't like it doesn't immediately react to hearing the name okay then i think I, I don't think i would try to like dig into it right now okay but i would definitely be thinking about it okay um while knee checked is uh distracted but uh sidle up next to Zix and be like Jura and Liliana? Yeah, I guess so. I did want to uh, to see that he's kind of like staring me in the eye, trying to look for look at, gauging my response. Uh, I'll just be honest with him. I, I think I'd, you know, my deception, any deception I was bringing to this was more of about timing than withholding information. So, um, Seeing him look at me and kind of like the lie on my lips fading away. Um, yeah, I just I mean, like, I'm still trying to like keep it away from knee checked as well. Like, the uh, I'm definitely uh, like very involved with the situation though, <laughs> yeah. Um, but well, I, I, I would try to listening with a side eye, by the way. <laughs> I, would, I would try to lower my voice. Like, and, who and, are these people? I would try to lower my voice and respond to uh, Blackwell and just go, "Yeah, I guess so. I don't, I don't know how deep that connection went. I didn't want to bring it up to to Nee because I don't, I don't think any, I don't think any good could come of Nee setting his sights on Jura for any reason. So I figured I'd wait till we were gone to tell him. Um, maybe, maybe you could look into the sword for the memories." I mean that that that's that's also could just be his like private proper private business if you don't want to. I mean I've never tried that. I know that Jura spoke to me, but I I don't know if I don't know how much control I have over. Well, you did mind. say your own memories were clouded, and by touching the sword, his memories were restored. So it seems like all of your memories are kind of mixed in there. Um, well, there's, it seems like if you know that somebody has access to some information, you might be able to access it by delving into the sword. Uh, again, that could be um, something that you're against, and I completely honor that. I do get that that impression that there's some there's uh, there's thoughts and ideas in this thing that are not. Oh, you haven't tried to talk to the ship. Uh, not mine, but the. I don't know if those are the minds I'm connecting with. This thing whispers. <laughs> like every every time I'm ho holding it, I can hear it's like thousands and thousands of people whispering. Maybe it's killed thousands and thousands of people. Maybe it's a so soul sucking sword. <laughs> I'm joking. So it's like Please the opposite of sword. this staff that just screams. Oh, God. <laughs> it was with whispering sword screaming staff. <laughs> yeah, it's what, just are we like going there's a uh... group of loud weapons fighting Nicobolus. That's gonna be hilarious. Let's sneak up on the giant elder dragon with loud yelling weapons. I mean, my my <laughs> weapon definitely me last last time I used it, so yeah. Mine's just a <laughs> just a heavy thing I hit stuff with. 
I'm just happy I am the fucking weapon. I uh, I don't know. I know that sometimes I feel like those whispers are providing me thoughts and ideas that didn't come from me. And I feel like the that person who asked me to take on a part of their soul, somehow their memories are mixing with mine. I didn't realize that souls were memories were tied with souls. That definitely probably should be researched further. That's a scary but thought. I don't you know, thinking about I don't, it. I don't I think I'm getting why. any memories from the others. I don't I don't remember anything about being the captain and I don't remember anything about being Jura. It's like their minds are too strong to to just get what lost in the you, sword. What did you see when um, you tried to remember your own past? It may be that one of the personalities in the sword is overriding all the others. Every time I try to think about certain parts of my past, I remember a lot of fighting. Uh, I remember the there's a lot there's like the clang of an anvil um hot coals uh, screaming blood uh maybe the original maybe the original users memories uh are the strongest in the blade i think he might have been the one that asked me to take a part of his soul Uh, ah so he's the one yeah and, I, and I'll point over to the forge, and I think that's him. That's his influence. Oh. I don't know. I don't know where the dragon's coming from. Maybe the one of the souls in the blade is the dragon. I mean, it did. We. That's why we were trying to get the sword, is because it had killed a dragon before. So maybe that's where this came from. So, a theory here: if we kill Nicobolus with the sword, would Nicobolus's soul go inside the sword? Yes. Uh, theoretically, yeah. So what do we do with Nicobolus' soul after we, you know, stabby stabby with the sword? I mean, that thing's going to be dangerous after, you know, Can I have it? And done. No, <laughs> you don't get any more it? cursed objects. You've got <laughs> enough. <laughs> no, okay. no me. Mm-mm. As well, your big think- sister, That's no. I would think the best course of action would be to find some way to seal the blade so that um, he can't get out of it. Hear me out. At any point. Take a big hole. Sword in hole. That is not how you seal a magical item. What? That's how you seal anything. Big hole. You gotta find... <laughs> not uh, wrong. Uh, actually, you gotta find actually. like a, a mountain with a scary name. Something like like Mount Terror or like Mount Fear and then or you something tell like that. Everybody that and then you get to the top of that mountain, hey, but you really just go and hide it behind your house in a big hole. So hey, hang on, hang on. Apple's hey. actually got the good point, but if no one knows where said hole is, how are they supposed to find it? I mean, that's how we're finding things. Is other people have heard about the thing, but yeah, like we just put it in a big hole in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. Alternatively, yeah, but the thing that could... makes me f- scared is if I had to make a deal with the powerful people that the sword absorbed before, doesn't that mean the next person to pick up the sword would have to make a deal with Bolus? And that's not good. Yeah. No, so that's that's, that's what I'm saying is, is that we got to make sure that no one uses that sword after yeah. we take out Bolus. So, okay, so there are two things I can think of that would be better to hide the sword or seal it. For hiding it, this river of souls looks like a very good place to throw a sword. Uh, no. <laughs> no. The, a sword a that, soul, like, consumes a soul, souls? A sword that absorbs Wait. souls? You put guys think in a river I, of souls? I, you guys think if I put this sword in the river, it would absorb a bunch of souls? Probably. Uh, maybe. I don't think it works like that. But it know, could. Let's find out. Yeah, I mean, we, like, I mean, we're a little far from the river, but I'll try next time I'm near it. Oh, I'm scared of that. Well, that could pop out. And I don't um, say I'm scared of shit is, often. The alternative is um, sealing it in the core of a planet. Big hole. <laughs> what? That technically is a big hole, Avril. <laughs> how? How? I mean. How? 
I, I, mean, I feel like we're kind of counting our chickens for the hatch here. Like we haven't even seen or fought Bolus yet, let alone try to capture him with the sword. Well, and we can't get to the Bolus until we get out of this place and find whatever forsaken soul is here that we got to rescue. I, I also have one, one final thing to say about this. If we have to seal that sword, I think we should be the ones to do it. Because honestly, I'm not trusting any fuckers outside of our group right now. Not after running into a she who shall not be named in the previous place. True. If we were at, if we were to try to entrust the sword to another planeswalker, um, it is possible that they could uh, either make another pact with the blade, or um, get some ideas about how they could use it to further their own games, um, such as Liliana trying to dispel the demon that has her brother's spirit. Or. Hey, don't call me some... that. <laughs> nee. I'm not a demon. You're not. No. You have his face, not his spirit. No, there I mean... is an actual demon that has a spirit. We saw it. Hey, hey. Uh, yeah, nee okay. is my okay. little Satan spawn brother, okay? <laughs> I, when did, did I miss something? I don't think Nee wore, swore anything to a devil or anything. That was Liliana. No. Liliana was fighting the demon. We saw it. Yeah. And that oh, demon yeah, yeah, has true. her brother's spirit. Well, this, I think it's because the spirit was in that face. So technically, yeah, this one. Nee, nee stole the spirit from the devil. Yeah. Speaking of which, oh, is, so there, is there it? some way we can make Nee's I face do. a little nicer looking so it wouldn't uh, look like her brother's? Just in case we run into her. Like, I mean, I, honestly, I have like, access to this forge. Uh, Maybe we can help him put a hinge on the back of that thing so he can air out a little bit. Actually, I don't think we want to see what's under this. Uh, oh, oh. I think we need put a butt to. flap on his armor. Yeah, I was yeah, about to say, uh, yeah, oh, me, uh, no. me, how's yeah. the bathroom situation looking right now, yeah, bro? It's, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Oh. I mean, take a big whiff. Yeah. I can do no. this. I'm gonna. I wave my staff and a cloud pops up above me's head and starts raining. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to, uh, since I have these memories of, of a blacksmith, I'm going to go over the forge, study his armor a little bit, and then see if I can maybe like make a, a hinged uh, cod piece and like butt flap that he can uh, start using the bathroom and cleaning himself properly. I will point out point out that the last time he took off a piece of the armor, it ripped off his face. The yeah. Whole, the whole thing. to take off his god piece. Yeah. This, <laughs> if, you're, if you're right, and the guy that forged this sword is the memories I've got, then he's got experience with magic items, so, and make magic weapons and armor, maybe he knows a better way to do it. Or, oh, it would be nice if me could at least, you know, slip out of that armor. I just want to be able to poop. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it where you can slip out. I'm not going to sleep next to a pissy brother. <laughs> I don't know if I can make it where he up. can uh, he can take all the thing off, but maybe just like uh, the just hinging the cod piece and and opening the back. That's a, that's pretty much all we can hope for here. There. So I will tell you guys that to get to where I've got the token here, that is a, about a four uh, a four hour. Travel time, so yeah, if there's anything we can do in that time. Four hours. El Una's just <laughs> chilling at this point. I'm uh, finding a, a place with, like, uh, if possible, uh, a cover to where rain could just be hitting the cover while I'm standing under it. Uh, <laughs> trying to take a nap. Okay. Uh, so you're going for a long rest or like a short That's rest? Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm feeling like, uh, I, I went crazy a little while ago. Like maybe I just need to sleep it off. Okay. A little now. lightheaded. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try and link up uh, again and see if I can get any further with it. But by the sound of it, I'm not getting very far in this world. I'm okay. going to start, uh. I don't know. Should we should we continue along with the ship, or should we just hover a while? I mean, how long can Seems the ship like... actually stay in the air? That's the bigger question. Um, I wasn't planning on sleeping. If you wanted, 
me to keep watch. I slept like what a couple hours ago. I'm good. It seems yeah. like we're just making really good time here. Like the the glow is fading in the background very quickly, and we're getting to this like well, you don't dark have to quick. sleep for a long rest. You just have to not do anything strenuous right now. Yeah, what if I what if we just command the, the ship to hover here and we'll uh well for another four hours that'll give me long enough to to wake up from I, I can stay up and keep watch though you all know I'm get easily distracted. As her eyes should... like kind of sw shift over to Brecken, who's probably doing laps around her head. Before Nee falls asleep, I'll go and I'll try to like do some you know, check out his armor and see what I can do. And then I'll go start working on like concepts or anything I can try to trigger memories that I have now to see if there's anything I can make fix. So I'll just go there and start tinkering with stuff at the Smith. Um, I am going to remind you like, like as you talk about how this guy is the, the Smithy and this guy has the forge and everything. I'm going to remind you that you did work a forge for at least a year. Mm -hmm. I did. I did. I did some metallurgy back in. Uh, yeah, so you, it was a little it different, though. And, uh, and from what I've heard of your people, they have a connection to metallurgy as well. I do have a bit of an affinity with metal. Mm -hmm. right. you, may not, you may have lost. That may have been a memory you lost, but um, it is. In your blood to work with metal. So far, the only memories that seem to be affected are the ones where I learned about my people's ways. Yeah. All right. So you guys are kind of hanging out for another four hours to just try to see what's going on. Yeah, I think we'll just like uh, I'll command the ship to just hover here. Um, so far, we've been safe. So I'm just going to kind of hope that that's the that stays true. Um. And we're we're out in the middle of nowhere, so I'm gonna go ahead and hover for another four hours. I'll work some some stuff, um, let me check sleep, and everybody can get long rest and stuff. Okay. Uh, so before you guys uh, start doing what you're gonna do, uh, I will tell you what you see as you kind of approach this mountain range that spans through the center of the the underworld here. Uh, you kind of come across the top of it where you can see one massive volcano sticking. From the center of this area it seems like it's constantly erupting this magma uh but that magma glows uh with a strange color it's got a an odd hue to it um as it spews out though surrounding it you can see these massive columns that come out of the ground each one housing a massive like coliseum it looks like ancient structures that rest atop these pillars they're all connected by gargantuan stone staircases that lead between the pillars uh just over the uh as you look past the cloud of black plumes that come out of the volcano uh you, you can see on the other side the land drops off dramatically into this large pool of water uh that seems to be uh laying on the horizon of what you can see um as you guys are starting to to do your different tasks here uh so what i'm going to have you guys do is uh avril i'm going to have you roll a nature check uh to tap into the mana to see what you can kind of get um zix i'm going to have you roll a I'm gonna have you roll a okay I'm gonna have you roll a uh Insight check with your Arcana modifier. Okay. Uh, so I guess it really be wisdom, wisdom, wisdom Arcana check. Um. 
and the rest of you guys were kind of just hanging out, right? Except for uh, Nietzsche check you're taking a nap. Well, before I crash out, um, I want to yeah. go over to Una and uh, hand her a little stone. Um, it's Why is all my stuff double good posted? Luck. Because uh, I don't know if she has any attunement slots left, or if not, I know Brecken doesn't have any magic items. No, she doesn't have any. Yeah, I just give you the luck stone. Oh! Yeah, we were talking about that. It's like, I think Una still has a slot open that she's not using. Uh, yeah. Actually, Una does not have any anymore, because she had to attune to the Wand of Web. Oh, you just, you you picked up a wand web. I forgot about this. Mm -hmm. Well, then give that to Brecken. It raises all of her. Um, it'll raise all of her <clears throat> ability checks and saving throws by one. Oh, she definitely would use that. Yeah. It looks like a little cat. It's cool. It's <laughs> the stone of good luck. Nice. Thank you. Una yeah. will definitely thank you for that. Well, yep, Brecken would on. actually do it more than Una. Coming in hot with a five. Five. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so I'm I'm trying, to say this twice. is the first time I'm trying to do this, so this might be a little difficult. Yeah. So, uh, Avril, as you kind of meditate uh, to try to uh, get the essence of this uh, this area that you're entering... Uh, the only thing you're really able to draw from it is uh, these feelings of, like, rage and passion all kind of mixed together. Uh, very uh, reminiscent of red mana uh, permeates the, the area surrounding you. Um, Zix, you're trying to recall uh, anything you've seen in your uh, studies through Strixhaven as well as... Uh, trying to pull some kind of information from from the uh, sword's knowledge as well. Um, you do think that there is a way to modify this armor, and you think that it might require a special kind of material to, to work on it, but you're unable to re recall or glean any information that would tell you what kind of material might might be able to be used to to modify the armor let's see how would how would six handle that i think i've there's probably a lot of just like throwing tools um a lot of cursing uh probably not making a secret out of it at all um that i'm getting i'm just getting more and more frustrated. Um, uh, how long have you kind of, on um, I don't really have a whole lot else to do while we're just hovering for the next four hours. So I'll uh, I'll work on it off and on throughout the four hours. Um, kind of hitting my head against the wall. And um, if you'd like to, uh, I'd like to spend uh, maybe an hour with you trying to help jog your own memories, or at least what I've from my pro point of view. Yeah, I mean, if you if you wanted to take part of your time and hang out, that'd be cool. You, uh, we definitely worked on the spear together, so we've got uh, I've got my knowledge of metallurgy from that time. I also I did pick up uh, some like smithing interest and stuff in Shrikshaven as well. So I've got history of of you know smithing, but it was it's never it's not anything near on this level, and I've never worked with a cursed item before. Yeah, well, I'm not just trying to restore just your smithing. I'm just trying to, like, just your own memories about your own, like, lineage. Oh, yeah. That's, honestly, if I sit down to talk to you about that, it's probably a lot of um, Zix talking and then zoning out for a while as he sees memories that are uh, unpleasant and not his own as he tries to focus on digging back through things. I mean, that's so what I was hoping to do, why I wanted to sit down with you for it is because I wanted to um, I wanted to use encode thoughts. OK, that's interesting. So I, could I don't use, I don't know what to do. It would, be, it would be from my point of view. I'd be giving you um, visual images and moving pictures of 
yourself doing your own stuff. As far as for, like from your own memories? Yes, it'd be from okay. my own. Okay, that's interesting. So it's kind of like a, a reminder of the of that of that at least that part of my life. Right. Okay, that's very cool. Yeah, it would uh, it wouldn't be much, but it would be proof that you were somebody else, and that that somebody's still there. I think that would that would definitely, if anything, that would kind of chase the ghost away for a little bit, just kind of reminding me that at least the the a solid chunk of my life, like the years that I've been spending with you guys, is still all mine. So, um, parted. It's I guess uh, after this kind of plain that uh, you guys are more my family now than my people are. So, Nichek, you go to drift off to sleep. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're able to get a little bit of shut-eye. But instead of kind of going into your normal, like, dream state, uh, you are brought into a familiar kind of vision uh, similar to the ones you had before. This time you stand at the foot of a bed in the same dilapidated room that you keep finding yourself in. Mm -hmm. Uh, The door opens and you turn to look and you see a uh, female dressed in these uh, this flowing white robe with this circlet kind of in the shape of a of a moon atop her head. Uh, she kind of is holding this bag uh, and staring at you. She's kind of got this look of fright as you turn towards her and you're filled with a sense of rage. Uh, you get this thought that crosses your mind that just uh, echoes in your ear. She did this to you. This She's the cause of your suffering. And you go through these flashes of one minute she's standing there kind of weeping and uh, you see yourself strangling her for a moment before you blink and flash again and she's kind of reaching into the bag and then you flash into another moment where she's thrown against the wall by your hand and then uh, flashes again and you see her pull out this potion and her hand is shaking as she kind of mouths to take the whatever's in this vial, and uh, you suddenly wake up at the end of your long rest. Do I do I recognize the face of the person? You do. It looks remarkably similar similar to Professor Onyx's sweet face that you have longed to see. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, so I, I think Ni would just like wake up, like, and kind in kind of a a panic, kind of feeling like he did after, uh, like pointing it at Runner in the temple, uh-huh. like. Yeah, I don't know, just kind of like panting and like like sweating almost, just like heart racing. Just yeah, kind of uh, feeling like he got a rest, but at what cost, sort of thing. Okay. Uh, stone of good luck. All right, she should have that now, Una. Uh, awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Say, yeah. Did you say I got a rest though? You did get a long rest. So uh, actually, all you guys uh, do do get a long rest as you're not doing any difficult activity at the moment. So you guys can go ahead and mark that off on your character sheet. Uh, 
I, I, I would, uh, I'd be okay with taking a short rest if you want to count the me doing the encode dots over and over as being harder. Okay. Yeah, if you want to take a short rest, you, you can do that instead. Yeah. Either way, you'll avoid the exhaustion effects of not taking a long rest, so. <laughs> Good. And as soon yeah, as Uno wakes up, she is doing her thing of rolling her bag of tricks for the day. Okay. Yeah, it is and past dawn now. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, it should be past dawn now. So Woo-hoo! my stuff is... Hey! It's a dire wolf day! <laughs> All right. Una's like, big fluffy puppy! <laughs> There's someone a dire wolf that pops up on the back of a dragon boat, and it's like, ah! <laughs> oh, Una so... would have done it like Probably while well, she was just chilling at the edge, just kind of like looking out and stuff, and be like, just throws the ball over her shoulder. And next thing you guys all see is a wolf just kind of plop up and just walk over and sit next to her and take a nap. So, what you guys are uh, hearing at, as you kind of realize that the ships drifted off to to the east just a bit, not not a lot but it's just slowly been drifting off towards the east. Um, you can hear these loud roars echoing in the, the mountain range below you between these uh, massive booms of eruptions from the volcano. Uh, and swords clanking gives this like uh, very uh, loud ambience to, to the air around you. The the air, uh, as a matter of fact, starts to feel very warm, uh, almost almost hot. Like when you picture the underworld, this this is the feeling that you kind of uh, get, and this smell of sulfur fills the nose. Look, who farted? Like it smells like rotten eggs in here. Sorry, I don't. No, I don't think it's you, bro. Oh. Um, Dottie was saying, uh, can we hear the sounds of battle? Yes, it does sound like a massive war is taking place just below the ship. Even though you can't look down and see the remnants of war, uh, per se, uh, you can hear it for sure. Hey, so hey, hey, look me. over, all excited. Ah! <laughs> this is where we so yes? Hey, should What's I up, throw sis? a fireball down there? Uh, I mean, probably not. <laughs> oh, come on! You know it'd be funny. I mean, uh, I, guess, I mean, if, fight. if you want to. <laughs> like, maybe they'll think we're a red dragon, but, like... I mean, yeah, it'd be kind of cool. I mean, we're already, like, in the underworld, so, like... Yeah, you can't get more dead in the underworld, right? Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> We're like, we good. Avril, do you think I should do it? Come on, two out of three votes here. Can you shoot that far? Um, you know, I have that meta magic spell that lets me, you know, make the distance twice as long. But we can't even see the fight. Well, as long as it's within, you know, um, about, let's see here, if I remember my magic right, I can throw a regular fireball 150 feet, so technically I can throw it 300 feet. We are easily that high above the tops of these mountains. We're flying, like, super high in the air right now. <laughs> True. But just think about it, a big fire lights in the sky. (laughs) He doesn't know what kind of fight's going on down there, but he's interested. I mean, like, it might disperse some cloud cover so we could see what's going on down there. Should I do it? Should I do it? (laughs) Is that where... Is it down there that we got to go, or we still got to go, like, which way? Oh, no. I, I think we're going that way. And Nia, like, points off 
into the the distance but can can we see like the lake and stuff like that like way off in the distance or no you can you can it kind yeah. of is a uh, like setting on the horizon of what you can see yeah I, I would i would point out point out that direction okay should i do it guys come on last chance all right going to save your resources ah it's just the mana here getting in getting you all wired <laughs> bored she goes over and starts petting her dire wolf Okay. This is the red mana area, so I can see you being a little bit more. Hey, anyone got a knife or something? I want to try something. Hey, Avril, I need I need that bear rug. You're not taking a knife to my bear rug. No, 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 no. I'm going to try to put wolf fur on your bear rug. Oh, okay. Let's <laughs> <laughs> say that the wolf starts freaking out. It's my wolf. He'll do what I fucking tell it to do. <laughs> yeah, he whipped up the bearskin rug. All right. <laughs> it's going to take her dagger and start trying to gently cut hairs off her wolf to see if she can try to get it on the rug. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll a slide of, slide of hand check. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> As dire wolf fur lined bearskin rug. Oh God, nope! <laughs> yeah, as you Wolf go to howling. as you go to uh, shave shave the wolf, uh, you're kind of like starting to cut some hair. It's looking good, and then suddenly these giant wings go from the sides of the ship. Oh God! Flat, and you guys start to slightly thrust forward, and uh, it keeps your hand from being too steady. You're you're making a mess of this fur. Um, it seems to just be like these patches, spotty patches coming out of the wolf, and it's looking at you with like, uh, yeah, somber as, eyes. As we uh, start heading Look, forward, you're gonna turn just... it back into a fluff ball at the end of the day, so don't you'll be fine. I'll call out if uh, Uno's thinking about throwing fireballs off the side, then we're obviously done with our rest. I'm gonna get going again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, dude, I've been bored and awake this whole time while you all took a nap. I hear you. That's why we're going to move. Okay. We're going. Just, you, know, you could have warned me before you made this thing go forward. I was trying to fix the Avril's dog. rug I ruined. You're shaving a dog to fix a rug? <laughs> yes. Is it the is it the way that those rugs work that the hair is attached to the the tanned skin and that's why it like stays all together? How are you gonna how are you gonna make? Are you just gonna glue it on? Uh, yeah, I've been saying. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but if you glue it on, are you just gonna glue it like sideways and like a giant mat of hair? Like how are you gonna glue the tip of each hair to the hide? If it was cut, I could ma magic it back together, but it's burned. And it's dead. So no, Avril. I think you need to give up on this thing and stop trying to make Uda fix it. Like, just Look, kill another bear. I, I made <laughs> Avril a promise I was going to fix this goddamn rug, and I'm going to do it. Okay. This is well, my you... penance for killing the fucking goblin. Well, then you kill another bear, and we'll just skin that one. You know, I, I have an idea. No, that won't work. <laughs> Well, just don't kill it with fire. I'd, let me just preface that. I can we'll kill right... anything without fire. You know this. All if of you, you use know. fire, we'll be right back where we started. Would have to go kill another bear. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I have an idea. I'll polymorph into a bear, and someone skins that off of me. How's that sound? I mean, we sounds can, horrifying. We you can know, try. I have of another mage quite like you. They have. They were incredibly skilled, and they could use all kinds of different magic, but they only used stuff that exploded. What if, like, uh, just stick with me here. What if mm -hmm. she did turn into a bear? We skinned her and then healed her as we skinned her. 
Ugh. Would we get? Would we end up with a with a hide then? Like then we could tan that and just. No, is that, can is heal, that too far? It can heal a lot of damage, not psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> That'll stick with all of well, us. <laughs> well, I'm, okay, maybe a haircut would work. I mean, come on, because technically it's still me and all of my shit. And but you then know, we I'm, just have these loose, short hairs that we can't we can't turn into a rug. That's fair. Well, Auburn I'm trying something here. Okay, it's the... we just need to. I think the simpler. Just replace the rug. We just need to find a wizard with wish. <laughs> just, that's that's a lot. Can we? Do, why don't we just find a bear? I'll stab it for you, and then you turn it into a rug. I wish it was a basket rug. <laughs> I wish it was. A but dark wolf hairs are so much cooler than bear skins. Well, we could always get also make a dire wolf rug. You have to skin the dire wolf then. Not shave it. Come here, wolf. Hey, 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 hey! You aren't skinning my wolf. <laughs> oh, okay. So you guys, uh, I'll do it. <laughs> you guys start to hear hear a rumble coming from below as you are passing over this uh, area, and the earth or the the land below you seems to shake a moment, and then you hear. As the volcano to the left side of the ship begins to erupt, and you see this black plume come barreling out into the sky, as you guys are flying uh, perpendicular to to the volcano, this black plume kind of covers the the view on the ship for a moment. Uh, there's this slight rain almost that seems to drop down. You see a drop go on the side of the ship. It just starts to sizzle. Looks like it's raining magma from this eruption. Oh. Oh, oh my yeah. shit. Cool. That's <laughs> not great. I'm going to go ahead and go through one of the doors and go blow duck. <laughs> okay. Uh, so maybe let's move faster. <laughs> uh, I, can I do that? I'll, I'll try to will the ship to go faster. Does it got a mm -hmm. constant speed? Uh, you you can actually make it uh, somewhat dash. Uh, it kind of depends on the wind, uh, but I will say this will work because there's not really wind necessarily. <laughs> this is the uh, stab block for it. Um, so I'll give you the sixty feet, sixty feet uh, movement. Like, is yeah, running well. an option on this ship? Because I feel like we should be doing that now. I'll go <laughs> below deck, and I have no clue how any of this works, so I guess I'll just hope that uh, whatever dragon skin I manifested might be resilient to fire, and then I will uh, <laughs> go go below deck and try to find, like, I guess meditation pose, lay the sword across my lap, and then um, just close my eyes and will the ship to go as fast as possible. Do we um, know this ship only lasts for eight hours? Yeah, oh. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm going to perfect. <laughs> Did anybody do uh, fucking I know. identify I know. on I it? I think water? when we first got it, we did identify on it. I think you did. Okay, yeah. if we if we do that, then I will definitely set. I'll have to find the like next closest place because we're getting very close to eight hours. We just did four hours of travel, four hours of downtime. So knowing that we're getting close, I will look for the nearest place of water and try to settle down there. Of water, you said? I, I mean, I don't really know how the boat works. I don't know how we put it back in the bottle without water. So I'm just, that's the, uh, the only assumption I've got right now. Okay. Um, I would, if it's starting to rain magma, I'll use the decanter and endless water and uh, then control water and basically like put a little like bubble over a big part of the ship, like a water okay. bubble. Okay. Yeah. So you start to do that. You start to put this like protective shield of water around the top portion of the ship. Uh, you're kind of standing there, focusing on it, flowing it through the air, and you start to hear tink, 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 and you look down and see that this uh, these steaming little chunks of 
some kind of metal uh it looks like gold is uh coming through the the shield uh Ooh. yeah it looks like this magma is is molten gold that's just uh trickling down slowly through the the shield you're creating is, uh, is this going to hurt the dragon skin it doesn't seem it's hot when I pick it up. <laughs> uh, it's definitely warm to the touch, but it's not like it's not magma anymore, you know. I'm definitely just walking around underneath the shield, just picking up chunks of gold. <laughs> yeah, Una, Una's thrown some into her bag. Okay. I'm trying uh, to make my armor studded armor. <laughs> <laughs> just laid out flat, staring up at the sky. <laughs> So you get one in your eye, and you're like, Fuck. "Yeah, <laughs> ah, wrong, wrong place to stud." <laughs> Una will move her direwolf to a spot to where it won't catch on fire. Yeah, I guess. Uh, no one, Avril can. In worst case scenario, if we get stuck somewhere, I guess I'll, uh, I'll just even if I'm aiming for a place, if I can't find water, aim for a place where. If we put water in it, then I like we could somehow get the boat in. You know what I mean? Because the as far as we know, the only way I've seen this used to put the boat back in, don't we have to dip the bottle in the water and then the boat goes in, right? As far as you know, that's how it's functioned, yes. Right. So I'm I'm triaging here, basically. So if I don't see any water that I can get to that I'm confident that before the end of the spell, I'll aim for like a depression or a large enough hole or something like that, that we could try to create water in to have the same impact. So this radius right here is where you could get to within the next hour. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm definitely so looking for, for some sort of like small hole or, something that I can put the boat down into that we can fill with water. It, like, even if we don't float the boat, if we can just get water under it or around it, we can do the water dipping trick. Okay. Uh, so what you see below you as you're kind of looking for a spot to land, uh, you see these, uh, like, cliff sides that kind of, like, chisel through it. Imagine the Grand Canyon, but the... the the ground is made of like this gray dust, uh, but it does form these little uh, cliffs and such that leaves like a canyon throughout uh, this lower portion below you uh, to the south. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll head for uh, some sort of like depression or something close to where the canyons are. There's usually, you know, a lot of uneven terrain, so. I'll try to find somewhere that just has a depression. Even if I have to only park the back end of the boat in a small hole and create water around it, like I'm aiming for whatever I can get away with. So, um, but I think uh, that's where Zix is at as far as finding a landing place. Okay. Doesn't the item go outside of the spell's limit, uh, time limit? Uh, well, basically, what it does is cast that spell whenever you use it uh, before it disappears. The the phantom galley spell. So, uh, effectively, you're under the uh, effects of that spell, essentially. Um, so, time limits would still probably apply. I'd say. Uh, then we shouldn't have to do the command word to put it back in the bottle, right? It would just go back into being a bottle check. Maybe. I'm just going based on what I... I'm making assumptions. I have no clue as far as Zix is concerned. If you wanted to to come up and make recommendations, that could totally work. And I haven't used the bottle myself at all. So. Yeah, right now, I, Zix is just kind of in a, oh, crap, time's running out. We need to hurry kind of mindset. So he's just trying to cover every base he can think of before it might be too late. Reckon does offer to uh, try to find a spot for us to land since she can't fly around a bit. I feel like me still at the front of the ship, like Mad Max style, you know? <laughs> Just like, yep, if we go down, <laughs> I'm going to be out here. 
Me, so... don't get so close to the edge. I need to be fine. able to polymorph into a bird and catch you. It's fine. Right. So as you are uh, going to try to land this thing, run uh, Zix, I'm going to have you make a wisdom, a wisdom check. Okay. You try to steer this ship into a small ravine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you're able to find a spot. You you can see that time's running out. The 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 ship is starting to kind of uh, fade out of existence. It's starting to like kind of like become translucent. As you're trying to quickly land land the ship before it's too late, uh, you come down. A little rougher on the ground than you expected. Um, and this music is really fucking loud. <laughs> and, uh, you, you kind of uh, are able to nudge it between the, the ravine below you, uh, but you're scraping the sides uh, as you come down onto the ground, and it's going to take a little bit of damage. Um Uh, so it takes uh, 14 bludgeoning damage to the the hull of the ship, uh, which it has it has 500 hit points, so that's not a lot. Uh, but it does tear up the the sides a little bit. Uh, but you're able to to land on the ground before it starts to slowly fade away under your feet. What do you do? Oh, sorry, everybody. That was uh, that was a little bit of rough landing. Uh, 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 Avril bottle. <laughs> Everybody out. Uh, get off, get off, get off. Yuna hops off <laughs> and sits on her dire wolf. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, I reach in, I grab a new bottle, and I toss it to him. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, I'll try to put it, like, near the, near the base of the boat and whisper the command word or say the command word or just hold it in place if that doesn't work to see if it fades into the bottle. Okay. Well, I, I would uh, if I see him do that, I'll use the water that I was commanding as a shield, and I'll puddle it around him. Okay. Uh, so the you're moving the water down as you whisper the the command word, Zix. Uh, it starts to like fade into ash and like start to trickle down from the top uh, into this puddle of water that just starts to suck into the bottle, and you can see it start to glow again as you pop your fancy cork right onto the top of it. Oh, well, that looks like that was a close one. Yeah, we we really need to figure out all the like limits of this thing. Okay, so let's say after seven hours, we need to make sure that we're landing. Yeah, also, we should probably route to my time and make sure that we can be over water again if we, you know. Now here's the bigger question. Can we summon that thing again within, like, you know, after you just put it back in the bottle? Oh, I don't know. I, I can we summon it without water? I tried water last time. Pablo's um, got that control water thing down, so maybe you know you don't need a I'm lot. Sure, of water. if he can, it yeah, just sucked up my water. Didn't the... it? Yep, it did. Yeah, I just oh. used my decanter endless water. That was all I had. Oh, uh, so we're gonna need more water before we can. Doesn't seem very endless. Make it work again. <laughs> All right. So does this mean that, like, you know, maybe we should fly to the nearest source of possible water? Is this still raining magma? Uh, it's since kind of dissipated on the on the uh, raining uh, molten gold. Uh, the the ash cloud still like darkens the sky above, but. Uh, the the molten rain has has he ceased. He does have more water. I was reading it. It is endless. I thought that it was like the beer one, where after I use one of the charges, I have to wait till the next day. But no, it's just I can only use one of the charges per turn. So yeah, I can still produce like a geyser of water. I mean, if you can control it, can you make like kind of a like a thin sheet of water about the size of the water to a hole? 
Oh uh, yeah, I can control it. I just need yeah. to. I, I just can make a. Out. We could make like a sheet of water. Maybe we could burst the bottle I on mean, the sheet of water. I mean, if you're gonna make it hover again, then above you, water. If you're gonna make it hover again, you shouldn't need as much water as long as the boat collides with the water. I guess that's true. And we're well, in I don't like, know, actually. I don't know how it works. We're in like a divot, right? Like I could just fill it. I don't need to use the control, right? I could just fill the area up with water. It's going to take a lot of water, but yeah, theoretically. Yeah, it says I can produce 30 gallons per turn. <laughs> it's not a lot. No, it's you, not. You guys are going to be there for a while. Well, uh, did anybody bring lunch? Uh, where's that chest? I think we had some food in there. We have rations. There's a, there's a lot of food in the chest. Yeah. He just pulls the cork off and he starts dumping. He's just like, we're going to fucking be here a while. Oh. <laughs> just, we're like hanging out while waiting for the pool to get filled so we can swim. Like, that's what this feels like. <laughs> yeah. You just pull out the chest. I got turkey. <laughs> ham. <laughs> ham and turkey. Uh, one slices, Dad. <laughs> Did. <laughs> Did you bring the goldfish? <laughs> being being on the front of the boat, uh, as we were like descending, uh -huh. is is there anything that I noticed or saw, like a landmark or something like that, that we could aim towards, or like anything like that? Uh, yeah. So what you would have seen is uh this. As you guys were uh, approaching this ravine, this body of water getting close was getting closer and closer. So you're not too far from that that large body of water that you saw. Um, mm -hmm. Other than that, probably a little closer is the uh, the range of coliseums uh, to the north uh, and the staircases that lead lead to them. Um, hey, uh, uh, Nix. Could you uh, take your sword um, and point it to the place to the north and then the place to the south and see which one feels um, stronger? Because I have a feeling it's the place to the south we need to go to. I will... Interesting. Okay, so I will... I'll take the sword and I'll walk... A hundred feet to the south. Do I sense the presence get stronger? Um, no. <laughs> okay, I'll return back to the spot. I'll walk a uh, hundred feet to the north. Do I feel like uh, it got stronger that time? Uh, slightly. It looks. It feels like it's coming from the northeast. Okay, that's what I was going to be my next uh, try was to walk east. Uh, after doing the north and east and realizing that it kind of grows a little bit, I'll put together that it's northeast and uh, I'll tell Avril that. Uh, it appears to be uh, somewhere in that direction. I uh, I only know if it's getting stronger if I move in that direction, so I had to walk it out. There's like some oh, stairs and like coliseums yeah. up to the north. Oh, it's water like what? What are you talking does, about? <laughs> does Coliseum trigger anything for me? Coliseum triggers something for me. I'm in. Hey, hey, <laughs> don't get distracted, Avril. Water. Um, Keep filling that pool. Uh, <laughs> uh, what What exactly do you think might my, my recall? I think uh, the, the soul that I'm carrying, didn't he spend some time stuck in a Coliseum? Wasn't he a gladiator, like, stuck as a gladiator for a while? I might be misremembering. It's been a while since we went over the... That is a good question. Let me take a look. That's whole. I don't think he was a gladiator, but I'm going to double check. Since we're waiting, I'm going to pull out the Spatio Nullifying Chamber and turn on the disco mode. Okay. <laughs> uh, while while I'm looking to Nietzsche, there would have probably been one more landmark you would have seen. Uh, so inside of this large body of water to your east, you would have probably seen this island of jagged stone uh, in the center of that 
that body of water. Okay. Like. Um, okay. Does that that would probably intrigue me more than like a col a coliseum, mm -hmm. but I feel like the 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 coliseums would like be more in the groups realm of yeah interest gotcha so uh, yeah we'll, we'll stick with what i said okay <laughs> yeah i think so, i'm misremembering something i think i'm remembering something about something else we talked about okay yeah, i don't i don't think he was a gladiator no, no, it wasn't. I looked. <laughs> I had to go back to my notes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Gideon, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, you, you would probably know what a Coliseum is, though. You know it's typically an arena for fighting or uh, events, usually. Okay. How, how long do... Do I think it would take to just walk to like this part right here where like the the water seemed closest? Uh, so I'll tell you that each one of these grid squares is a mile. Uh, it okay. takes about it takes about an hour to walk two miles. So and how long do I think it's going to take to fill up this hole with water? I don't know the math on it, but it's going to take a long time. Probably, if not, it's probably close, if not more than two hours. <laughs> I think that, I, I mean, make doing those realizations, me would be like, the, guys, we could literally just, we could walk. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, like, we got to go that way anyways. Like, we went, he went this way and that way. And like, I mean, we, we get, I'm all for the pool, but like, but, then, but how do we cross the river? Well, well, we could just throw the bottle in the river. We yeah. don't need to wait for the pool. Oh, that's pretty smart. And we well, can I maybe, should... and we can maybe check out the, like the Coliseum or whatever on the way or like to the stair. <laughs> maybe there's something over there. I feel um, like you really need to speak up more, Nee. Well, you know, there's a lot going on <laughs> right now. You know, I did suggest that you know we polymorph the rest of the way, but nobody heard of me. Like, I mean, I, I honestly, I don't even think that we need to do that. You know, like it, I, it couldn't take us more than three hours to to walk. But flying over so much better. I mean. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, unless like the that volcano goes off again. Like, yeah, that's that's the reason I want us to fly out of here as fast as possible. As soon as doing air quotes, up a lot of gold from that volcano. Shouldn't I mean, we stick around maybe a little longer? You, you know what? I, I so have a giant bag full of gold. As Una like shakes her giant backpack as it makes a clinking sound. Santa sack, you've got tossed over your shoulder <laughs> right now. Yeah. I'm gonna walk. Um, with this I mean, okay, okay, I'll I'll walk with you. Hey guys, we're walking. Uh, I um do the math real quick, uh, to gauge how long it would take to walk, throw the bottle, and then fly, versus waiting for the water to fill and then fly. That okay. is a Blackwell thing to do for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's probably it's. <laughs> Assuming you can find something to block the water from the, the north and south directions somehow, like some rocks or something, uh, you're looking at a, about a uh, it's about a uh, two mile stretch between the the different walls of the, the ravine, so <laughs> you're looking at like a at least a two mile rectangular volume. Like an old earth to make a hole, you know. We need really should start like preparing for this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we literally like just got thrown here after we got the bottle and the sword, so technically we weren't even prepared to be here in the first place. That's true. We're doing a trial run in the underworld, and that's yeah. not a great place to 
to test things out. Honestly, I think we should have, like, planes walked back to Ravnica, prepared, and then come back here. But no, nobody listens to Una. Well, if we listen to you, then we would be genociding goblins everywhere we go. <laughs> Touche. Uh, I will tell you guys, as you've collected about 45 gold, gold worth of gold. But it's not uh, into to currency. It's just chunks of gold. Chunks of yeah. gold. Hell yeah, forty-five gold chunk. All right. Yes, <laughs> mint our own coin. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess if he's walking, I'm I'm walking with him. Okay. So, yeah. where where are you heading, Nietzsche? Are you heading towards the Coliseum, or are you just heading directly as close as you can to that body of water? So, well, like, I assume that this is, like, a little, like, valley right there. It is, yeah. Yeah, I would just head through the through the valley. Okay. All right. Is anybody else besides Zix going with Nichek? Or are you guys waiting it out? I'll be going. Uh, 30 gallons. Blackwell's over there making marks in this, the, the dusty... Uh, <laughs> ground as uh, Apple's sitting atop a rock, just pouring out this decanter. <laughs> and occasionally, like, the dire wolf is jumping in the puddles of water, <laughs> yeah. doing the dog shake thing for sure, making a pretty good little puddle. <laughs> and knees, knees feeling like there's a lot of, of turmoil going on in his head, and he just heard about Liliana and then in his dream, like threw her up against the wall and like, yeah, he's just like, yeah, I just got offered a stuffed animal before I went to bed. Like I, I got, I gotta go. Like they, <laughs> I, we gotta get, we gotta start getting shit done. Um, so I'm going to stand up, not noticing knee checked and Zix. I already haven't started to walk off. Uh <laughs> I'm going to declare that filling up this puddle, this uh, two mile hole, would take approximately uh, several two hours. Oh god. my god! No, nope, <laughs> we're walking. Oh, there you have it, folks. That's as, the soon as, so. <laughs> as soon as you know? Eric hears that, she jumps up her tire wolf and like, nope, we going, and she's walking. She's just <laughs> walking. If you, if you think about it, that's actually like quite fast. That's a yeah. that's a lot of water. It's, 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 it's quite it's it's over twice as fast as a hose, but still that's a lot of fucking area to fill up. Yeah. We don't need to we don't need to wait that long. <laughs> you're 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 creating a lake with a water hose essentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nope, nope. We can that's... we can make it to the to that wherever the water is at that point by the time this hole fills up. Yeah. We would be supplementing our water intake by going to the lake to get water. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, don't you dare drink any of this. Yeah, I think I think me would just head head north. Head north. <laughs> okay. It would be so the only as we're uh, if we start heading north, I'll I'll talk. Well, I don't think that this is the the necessarily the right direction. It's. Well, I mean, we got to go at least a mile this way, and then you know, at like oh, we gotta walk I, around. The... Yeah, like we gotta, we gotta go through there and then go around. And I mean, I was I was looking over the edge of the of the the ship, and I I, I saw the, you know the, the the big lake over there. There was this weird like spiky island too. I I mean, I thought it looked kind of interesting. Uh, but I mean, there's also some stuff over here. Like, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I just want to get out of here as fast as possible. Yeah, Luna you and me the both. I'm not is... liking being in the underworld until it's my time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I feel strangely at home here. Uh, That's disconcerting. But you know, it's uh, that this isn't where we're supposed to be. I agree. So yeah, I, let's I go. I totally agree. Let's get the hell out of here. Hey, which one um, of you wants to ride the dire wolf with me? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm gonna. Thanks, 
sis, I'm 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 walking. I I kind of I gotta I gotta be moving around. Are you okay? You no. You want to talk? No. <laughs> I have fluffy giant dire wolf. Yeah, yeah, I I know. I like I'm not trying to like uh smell uh, smelly, you know. I'll whisper over I'll whisper over to you. Is this the, is this about the poop or Liliana? Uh I mean I mean a, a little a little of both. A little of both. I oh. like so like I mean I I took a nap on the boat and uh I had a, another like weird dream where like uh I was in I was in this like dilapidated room and that's all normal like it's it's fine uh and like in the dreams before like Onyx L- Liliana whatever wh- whoever whoever she is uh has been like coming in and like taking care of me uh or like right. arguing on the other side of like a, a door with who I assume is like maybe maybe the their mom uh but like this time uh she like came in and she was wearing this like white gown with this weird like moon circlet thing and 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 she had this bag and all i could think of was she's the one that did this to me and i don't really know what this is yet or like me i i feel like i i mean i know i was i was sick and like i feel like i I died and she like tried to bring me back or like i'm not exactly entirely sure but i got i got really mad and like i know that two things are true we know two things are true her brother turned into a face a cursed face yeah we're now wearing so like his uh, his life obviously went in a really wrong direction yeah, and from your memories, it sounds like she was taking care of him. So that explains why she had such like a sense of responsibility for her brother when she was dealing with the demon. She really mm-hmm. got angry when she found out the demon had the fa- had her brother's face. So I yeah. mean, it sounds like she did something she wasn't supposed to. It ended up doing this, and then now she's trying to somehow fix that or. Deal yeah, I mean, that trauma. I have no clue. That sounds like a lot. I mean, I I don't know. Like you, like do you remember like when we were there and she was there and we saw that and and like she saw me and then like she like disappeared. Yeah, you well, you did say that like you were here to get. I mean, you didn't know it, but you did tell her that you were here to get her brother's face. I, I did, and then, and then she was like, didn't I? Don't think she even connected that it was you. She just went off and about this demon having her brother yeah am am i the new demon i don't i don't know i was she i don't know if when she sees you if she'll see her brother if she'll see the the little boy that she taught or if she'll see a grave robber well more than one thing could be true at once that's true. I I don't know her well enough to know. Like we, honestly, we don't really know anything about her. She she was our teacher, I mean, but under false pretenses the entire time. How do we really? I mean, we don't she, really know what parts of her personality were right or. She like ran my my school. Like she, well, yeah, she yeah, but, yeah. I mean, yeah, she like taught classes and stuff, but like she, I like I I saw her a lot. Yeah, but she was also putting on an act she was being a person she wasn't she was like me whenever i was in demir well yeah i mean like i i mean i guess well i can tell you from playing a part it's not the emo- even the emotions you feel a lot of times are not always honest sometimes that's why we don't know how she's gonna act she may see you as a student and those may have been legit feelings or she may not even th- contemplate you as a student because that was just a character she was playing at the time it's all really weird it is a lot that's a lot i can understand why you're a little uncomfortable and kind of wanting to not be with your thoughts right now i probably should have brought it up you know let's just uh to the north right that's what you were saying like I'm, I'm yeah yeah uh oh uh una just like 
zip past us. I don't think she knows where she's going. She definitely likes <laughs> running, though. Yeah, she's she's going. So you guys, uh, as you're heading north, uh, come across this uh, barren wasteland. You can see uh, it looks like some ruins of some structures far to the uh, about about a mile out uh, from where you're at. Uh, but before you, you see these uh, rusted bronze swords jammed into the ground and these uh, bronze-headed uh, pikes kind of standing up between rocks and such throughout this uh, vast field of these weapons. Uh, several of the pikes have, like, uh, iron chains hanging from the head of the, the spear, uh, kind of dangling down to the ground. It looks like this is some kind of uh, ancient battlefield of some sort. There's a lot there's, of war in the underworld, I guess. Yeah, there's I like. I mean, there's a lot going on here. I mean, those people in that one city were like acting out oh, the parts oh, oh, oh. that they had in life. Maybe soldiers that die do this. They just like keep fighting and fighting and fighting, and then they like that. Do they come back and then fight again? Or, I mean, in that one city, they were just playing out their life's duties on repeat. Maybe that, maybe, they... yeah. So I was thinking they, they just go through the motions. So if these people only live to fight, then that's what their afterlife is. Yeah, we should definitely not go near them. Well, I kind of want to punch. They don't ever stop. They're just going to fight forever. You can't win. Yeah. Perfect trade. God damn it. Well, if you if you stop the fight and you can't pull away, I'm going to leave you here. I'm not going to live in the underworld because you want to get your beak off. <laughs> I'll be able to protect my forehead. <laughs> so you guys so, continuing on? Well, I think I think that if we go if we go north, like through this like battlefield, mm -hmm. uh, then then we're not necessarily heading towards the the lake, which is where we're supposed to be going. Because like uh, you like we we need to get closer to the other yeah, soul, we need to be right? Released. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, let's, uh, Una. Yeah. Una, we this we gotta go this way. Oh, you two done whispering? We oh, we weren't whispering. Oh come on, you were having boy talk. That's I mean. Uh, yeah. No, don't. No, I get it. I get it. There's some things you guys need to talk about that a girl should not overhear. I get it. Wow, it was more about like feelings That's... and emotions and like. I feel like if anything, that you're not. You're honestly, I mean, sometimes you're, it's just, you got a fiery disposition. You're not always, uh, you know, wanting to talk about the softer side of things. I feel like that was a very feminine conversation we just had. Well, I mean, we don't need to attach gender to it. <laughs> it was, we were doing all right. We well, just, she already did, you know. I, yeah, I guess so. I don't, I don't know look, what to do here. Look, this is, look, I, now look. I walk on. <laughs> you two were having a private conversation. Me said he didn't want to talk about it to me, at least. So I was giving you both some privacy. I was well, being he just asked, nice. He asked the he asked the question. He he. Well, I didn't overhear he, the question, so yeah, I asked I was kinda, first. It's kind of rude and blunt. Sorry, as I'm walking. It's, ahead. Nothing, it's, it wasn't rude. It wasn't. It wasn't. You weren't being rude. No, come on. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Nah, not rude. Yeah, just tactless. I, you know, it's fine. You guys talk. It's, I'm, a, I'm it's, gonna head uh, toward the river. Ah, ah, ah. Me, I get it. Sometimes you gotta have boy talk. It. What? 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 What is boy talk? I don't know. I'm not a boy. Well, you, you're the one that said it. Well, okay. Look, if there's something you can't share with me because that someone else asked you a question, then obviously. <laughs> It's guy talk. It's because not I'm that the I, only girl in this group besides Brecken. It's not that I couldn't share it with you. I just I I didn't I didn't know how to put it into words. 
and 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 Zix was just you know he asked questions and I just answered the questions and that spurred my basically what happened is I had had another dream where I was I was Josu and I threw Liliana against the wall and it's really just kind of taxing on my mental game because you know I grew up just idolizing this lady and now I don't know that she's it, she might want to just like kill me. Okay. Well, see, oh, now was that so hard to say earlier? Yeah, well, a little bit. Okay. Well, that was really emotionally aware. Good job, Kimi. Thanks. All right. You guys are <laughs> You guys are starting to get interrupted by this massive gust of wind that starts to pick up as you guys uh are heading <laughs> this dust blows up uh, kind of into your face and you kind of like uh, block your eyes for a moment and then you start to hear sounds of battle coming from your left side where the, the battlefield uh, was. Uh, you see these this dust start to take the forms of satyrs, centaurs, and humans alike. Uh, several of the humans are uh, on horseback charging towards the battlefield. Uh, you can hear them colliding with armored pike bearers, and you can see that they wear helms that have the horns of a ram uh, adorned to them. Uh, you can see them start to fall in battle as uh, each time they make an impact, they burst into a cloud of dust. Um, That's the impervious horsemen against pikes. Yeah, it's kind of what you see as you move off to the uh, around the the battlefield area. Yeah, knees, knees first, like looking around, like where where is Avril? <laughs> We're in the front, uh, right? <laughs> looking, watching this battle progress, and like critiquing them on all their mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Avril, we're we're moving. We're moving. Uh, what? <laughs> But, Avril, but, Avril, don't make me put you on the damn direwolf. No, there's a chance here. They're going no. into the scene formation this time. They might actually break through. No, th th Avril. I hope they didn't break through. It's heavy pikes. I keep telling them. I, I, <laughs> I, guess we're, I guess we know where Avril's going to end up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Gosh. Well, let's not ha let's not wind up here before we have to. Yeah, you know, don't. Me, don't tell Blackwell this, but I'm kind of glad I didn't throw that fireball. Yeah, I, well, I mean, like I, I told you, it was not a good idea. I know, but still, would have been fun. I mean, a April was probably right. You probably would. It probably wouldn't have even made it there. Yeah. You could throw it now, though. Nah, now it's no <laughs> more fun because now they can see us. I mean, they're pretty. I mean. What if we just like, hey, what's that? You know, and make them, and they all look that way. Yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll save it if we need to, if they spot us or something. All right, that's all right. That's, that's They're fine. not the smartest. They keep riding horses with heavy pikes. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Hey, Una, can you give me a stealth check? Sure. <laughs> You guys do spend uh, about an hour and a half uh, to get uh, longer to get to the the edge of this uh, water. Uh, the water runs with a foul green tint to it. Uh, it kind of rushes to the uh, the north, as you can see these. Uh, humanoid figures start to like form into the water before fading back into the depths uh, as they move with the the current of the the river i'm going to the dire wolf ain't stealthy as shit though <laughs> i'm gonna walk over to the water and uh dip the sword in just like just the tip okay yeah, it's it's fine for a moment. You see the the river split for like around the sword for a moment, and then you start to get these screams echoing in your head as the blade begins to glow and start to vibrate in your hand. 
I'll pull the sword back quickly. You kind of have this <laughs> feeling that, uh, like, like you know, like when you got like cotton mouth and you take a good drink of water, it's like slight relief of thirst. You kind of have that that feeling. Okay, that might have that might have been too nice. That's dangerous. Noted. <laughs> What do you, do you think it absorbed any souls? Yeah, and I liked it. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, do it again. No, <laughs> like, what, why? Because it, it, it kind of hurt and then felt good afterwards. Bro, I feel that, but like sometimes you know, like sometimes it's worth it. Sure. Like hurt, hurts and I feels mean, good, huh? I'm kind of, I'm kind of worried that if. I'm kind of worried that like this is a door I've now opened. Uh and if I prop it opened, then there might not be ever a closing it again. And I'm not really sure what that would mean. What if I prop it? What happens to the souls when you absorb them? I if I hear that, I would close my eyes. Is is the like cacophony of whispering is there more of it? Um it seems satiated for a moment. It's somewhat quiet for once since you've gained the power of the sword. Interesting. There's a, it did have a calming effect on the blade. It doesn't seem to uh, be oh, as, rest, as so, restless as it was. So the blade wants it too. So you sacrifice random souls to the blade in order to keep it quiet for a little bit? Mm, or souls that you kill. But it's really just put the soul into the river. Or the, I think the sword just or, wants yeah, but more we're not souls. Keep running across rivers of souls. Avril, yeah. can I have the biggest bottle you have? Uh, I only have big bottles. Perfect. Can <laughs> I have one? Yeah, sure. Here you go. Where are you uh, keeping those things that they are not breaking? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of glance back and forth at everybody, <laughs> and then uh, try to do repeat it with the sword again. God damn it. <laughs> I, I want to try to go to like slightly different part of the lake to like a few feet down the down the the shore and like try to stick the bottle in and see if i can't get some water like soul water into the bottle oh yeah because he drank the soul water back in the mm. um in the school oh okay. no uh okay how is this gonna go we got like a we got like the effects of a long rest, but then we threw up later. <laughs> you guys got me mainlining souls over here. Una's having flashbacks now to that like I mean, that we, one we day she watched me happen. drink that shit. Food. I'm pretty sure I was fine. Oh yeah, because you have the Oryx armor. Uh -huh. Yeah, like I yeah. Yeah, she overheard. I feel like it. I uh I feel like I took a couple painkillers and then one day I got a puff of heroin. You guys were like, do more. Totally. Like, <laughs> this is I mean, the same. Well, it's, you know. Well, I'm already saying that I disagree with this because you're like, I don't know what happens to the souls. Like, I don't know if you're just destroying oh, them I, out of the I order of things. I have no clue. Una honestly the way, doesn't the way care I see this is wanting to see this happen. The way I see this is I discovered you had mushrooms and I'm like, okay, just don't get weird about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And, That's, yeah, there's not really... I guess we'll see what happens. Yep. Like, okay. Nichex, Nichex got, got mushrooms and then he jumped to cocaine and I'm worried he's going to start going to heroin. Now he's vibrating in place at the speed of light. He it looks like the flash. <laughs> he is fully transcended the rest of these other small time drugs like <laughs> no no if he if he if he like gives in to the to the mask then i'll say he's fully on meth i mean he's honestly he's already got meth face so maybe yeah. he has escalated i'm dead meth face okay so this is what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna go with knee check first uh knee check i need you to make you said you're collecting some in a bottle, correct? Yeah. 
I need you to make me a sleight of hand check. Oh, I can do that. Right. 29. Nice. nice. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, you are able to collect a bottle of full water. Perfect. Uh, you said you're dipping your sword back in, correct, runner? Uh, yeah, yeah, they wanted, it sounds like everybody was kind of pushing Runner to, or Zix to figure out, uh, Zix, yeah. yeah, to experiment a second time and see what happens, so, um, I think Zix How right now is, try to is, follow a soul on its path through your sword. Yeah, but Z I feel like Zix is in a place where he doesn't know what's going on, he's kind of been cast adrift, so he's just a little bit more impressionable than he normally would, so... I feel like if somebody encouraged me where it's like, because my, my most trepidation, uh, most of my trepidation was coming from the idea that I'm apprehensive about the sword and I'm second guessing myself as to what this can do, whether it was worth the payoff, like any of that. So if I get encouragement, then that's just going to be like, okay, well, maybe that's just my own insecurities here. Maybe, maybe this is a good thing. Okay. So you are gonna... green souls, but then again, you might be enslaving them to eternity of like terror. Absolutely, I could be or, absorbing them and then using them until there's nothing left. Or you could be filling up the sword so that when we take it to take it in a technical bullets with it, it won't absorb him. It won't do anything that, for him. That could totally be a thing too. We have no mm -hmm. clue how this thing works. I couldn't Maybe even we cast have identify this sword on it. Up by somebody. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to cast Identify on it, and as soon as I accessed my power, it uh, attuned to me, and this, I swore oath to it. Okay, so my next question. Do you go deeper than just the, the tip? <laughs> no, I think... <laughs> God damn it. I put, us all, I put us all in this position. Um... I no, yeah no I'm just gonna do the tip again I'm just gonna repeat the same thing I did last time I think shove it in I no, think if anything I would be kind of nervous about it um good thing Nijek is over there uh, filling up a bottle well, and not yeah. pushing him in but uh, but I'm looking say so shove it in you know <laughs> honestly if okay so in the context of like that being that kid that's at the side of the river and it's like touch the frog or whatever i think if i do it the second time i would definitely be a little bit more brave about it so I'll, i would me put check, if me checks shout shove it in i will point out that we were told by um jura that uh the two gods warring right now are fighting over the souls and if they find out Someone is over here just stealing them. They might start the war with you two. And I'm going to say like, I think if that happened, I'd probably get to the point where I let the tip of the sword rest in the water. Like, I don't plunge it in. But, it, you know, it's about as far as it was before. But as opposed to doing a swiping motion, I would just stop. And then if he said that, I think at that point I would pull back. But at that, I would have got it into the water, I think, before Blackwell would have had a chance to... Uh, Talk yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have said that until Nichek started to try to goad you. And I would ask you to try and track one soul like through the whole course of this to see if you can like figure out what happens to it. Yeah, last time it was just a rush. I didn't even feel any individuality. Well, that's how it was like when I first learned how to feel mana too. At first, it was just overwhelming, but after a time, I can now pick and choose between what I'm looking for. Yeah, I'll, uh, as, as I put the, the sword like a few hours ago. Yeah. As I put the blade in, I'll try to concentrate on what's happening and feel it more than I did before. If okay. anything even happens. You dip your sword in once again, uh, sliding it into the water. You're filled with this uh, refreshing quench for a moment. You start to focus on on the feeling and you get this moment of uh, respite as you kind of are unwittingly 
going a little deeper into the water, and then a feeling of ecstasy as this uh, flood of emotion draws from the sword into your body and into your soul. And then you hear a thundering, loud voice come from the sky above. I cannot pass. I called it <laughs> again. I take it. Accept your fates and death. And you <laughs> uh, hear this wisp behind you in this cannon, uh, canyon that's kind of like surrounding you. Oh, fuck. Oh, what yeah. did you all do? Immediately jerk the sword back as like Blackwell's given this warning and then suddenly this voice happens. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd probably panic like I just got caught watching porn and take the bottle and just <laughs> throw it down and try to make the ship. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you, uh, Throw the bottle into the uh, the river. Uh, as you turn around to see what what uh, just happened behind you, uh, you see a creature slithering uh, up ah! to your location. Oh come on, <laughs> guys! I think that was a bad idea. I think that was a bad idea. I think I this was a that. great idea. I didn't do shit. <laughs> Put uh, in for once, I'm not the one who did things. <laughs> who all thinks they would have uh, turned around to look at this? this oh, thing? Una would have been looking the minute she heard the voice. I threw the okay. ship down and I'm already climbing aboard. I'm panicking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just standing I'm, uh, there with I'm an with open my... bottle. I'd have my shield up and axe out or hammer out. Okay. I'm, I always hold the ground until everybody else gets on the boat and gets away. So. Blackwell and me, do you guys take a look at the threat coming up from behind? Or do you rush to the ship? Um, oh, I'm, I am, like, focused on runner. Like, I heard the voice from above, not uh, behind first. <laughs> so okay. I am yeah, you totally see, on You the... see runner throws the bottle down in the water, and he's already, like, scrambling on board. <laughs> He's just like, like he's up. I just I just did drugs for the first time and I got caught. Like I'm that kid. I'm out. I want to try to run. It's all my instinct right now. It's flight. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Uno was just like I'm watching this chaos happen, and then that voice is like, "Oh fuck, we've been busted." Okay, on the ship. Let's go. I'm definitely looking at the whatever that is. So Avril and me are looking. Okay. Uh, uh, and Una's wolf is looking, but Una is looking towards the ship. Okay. <laughs> oh. Is Brecken looking? No, Brecken is tucked behind Una's hair right now, so we're... Una's head is, Brecken's head is. Okay. So this thing starts to move up. I need a wisdom saving throw from Una, Avril, and Nichek. That <laughs> you hear a hiss and her snake hair <laughs> starts to Does rattle. A magical effect? Uh, 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 you know what? You're a wolf, isn't it? You know? Yeah, the wolf was looking. I'm not. Uh, I'll say it's a magical effect. Yeah, I think it is. Thank God. <laughs> oh, you needed that. <laughs> uh, you oh. know what? That's an ability check? Or no, because it's a saving throw. Damn it. Can't use that. Yeah. Damn. Do I do I have to roll for my wolf too? Was it was it Una or the wolf? Yeah, because the wolf was looking. It was Una's, Una's wolf. Not. Okay, Una's not looking, so if it's the wolf, yeah, that would be for the wolf. Okay, then let me roll the wolves, because the wolf's wisdom is different than mine. <laughs> oh, it's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you guys, you two uh, and the wolf turn to, to look over 
and you feel this like wash come over you. Your eyes start to dry out for a moment, uh, but you're able to resist the effects. But you look over, and the wolf has been utterly turned to stone. Oh God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> I don't think uh, would. I knew I felt at home here. What's up? Uh, I mean, we're leaving. These guys feeling hard in a different way. <laughs> I'm gonna have everybody roll initiative for me, if you would, please. All right, guys. My guild leader does this. Oh yeah. Oh shit. You'd be like, you remind me of someone back home. God How about you damn. join my guild? The dice well, hate you're, me you're today. Second guild leader. Oh uh, yeah, the one that killed your other, the guild leader that you liked more. That's true. Mm-hmm. But still, I've so, seen it. I've seen it before. So it's strong. I mean, I guess so. It's capable of being the guild leader. What? Fight me. Where did my initiative go on the thing? I think I accidentally deleted you. I'm going to fix that, though. She could give me big uppies. <laughs> Sadly, you can't do anything about it because your cod piece won't come off. You know. Oh. <laughs> We're working on that. I got to figure out some kind of weird su exotic substance to use for it, and I just can't think of anything yet. <clears throat> All right. Here's a, if, if you're standing close to knee check, you hear this. <laughs> uh, okay, so that happens in Blackwell. Uh, you look at Runner, he's heading towards this ship. What do you do? Um, the wolf is in my line of sight, I think, so I would see it turn to stone. And I would call out to Zix to not look at whatever's <laughs> did that to the wolf. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and I suppose I will beeline it to the ship. I just go, your magic does not work on me, foul creature. <laughs> Odd. Okay. I'm going to, can, can I, we're going to try to do remove curse on the wolf. Remove curse. <laughs> Interesting. Just to see if it does anything. Because that would, that could come in clutch later. Even in the face of danger, still running experiments. Uh, you cast Remove Curse and the effect grabs onto the wolf, but nothing happens. Okay, I cannot remove curse this uh, stone thing, so do not get turned to stone. Uh, how about <laughs> we run then? Running, running good. Also, running Uda, is good. Like, Uda is on the wolf still the whole time. Charge! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was like that scenario. The wolf is pointed one way. Una's head was turned to looking at Zix the other. Like, it was that kind of scenario. Wouldn't the wolf have, like, gotten stopped mid-run? You just got pitched off of it? <laughs> yep. No, it was stopped at that point because Una was just sitting on it watching you guys play with the River of Souls. Uh, okay, yeah. Do you have anything else you want to do, Blackwell? You want to make some movement? Uh, I mean, I was moving to the ship. To the ship, okay. Uh, so that uh, that will get you to to the ship. You're still in a, a dangerous range of it, but uh, you are on the ship with Runner. Okay. Uh, or Zix. Um. All right. Uh, knee check. Uh, curious. It kind of uh, didn't affect like your cockatrice tends to do but uh a lot more powerful what do you do <laughs> so uh do you like come here often or <laughs> you hear a hiss as she says uh you fools have messed with Erebos's souls 
<laughs> you will pay. Oh, like how? Like how much? Like I got, I got, He's I got, got like a little bit. <laughs> she says, "You're blood, fool." Oh, see, I, I don't know that you want. I don't know that you want my. I kind of got this thing going on. Like, I don't know. <laughs> not for you, Nee. Come on. No, what? Not for you, bud. Not, not, not for no? you. Come on, hurry up. Yeah. Uh, um, Nee, check this one. At the start of your turn, if you are still staring, I need you to uh, roll me a constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. Ten. Uh, let's, we're going to use a lucky on that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm so glad we rested. I mean... This might not have happened if your dad didn't get so greedy with the souls either. Oh, oh God! No. Oh no! We're oh, just gonna no. we're gonna we're gonna stick with the ten. Sticking yeah, with the ten. Say, we're gonna stick like, with the ten. Maybe or maybe use like another lucky. Like mm, he's only got too. one left. I got two left, but we're sticking with the ten. Okay. <laughs> Are you uh, sure? You get petrified. It might be a minute before I can fix it. Uh, so you feel your feet get stuck to the ground as your feet begin to start to turn to stone. Oh, shit. You can Ooh. feel the moisture leaving your body, but you are currently uh, just restrained. At the moment, um, I have an action still, right? You do. Uh, how far away is this lady? Uh, far enough that I can hit her with my cock a trice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Probably There's a definitive theme going on. Yeah, tonight. Should we rename fun. the <laughs> deception? <laughs> Dusty and dirty. Session 42, <laughs> just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> uh, okay, you slap down your cockatrice onto the ground in front of this uh, snake lady. <laughs> slap down his cockatrice in front of her. <laughs> That's all I got, guys. It's all I got. <laughs> what, uh, uh, what you got? What do you think about that? I, <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do the same thing to her. Okay. So now you guys are just getting stoned together. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, it's gonna hit. <laughs> So constitution she, save of 11. She what? is, funnily enough, not immune to being petrified. Yeah. Uh, however, she does have a high constitution. So. <laughs> well, when, when you look good, you look good. You know what I mean? She got an 11. No. <laughs> she got an 11. Silvery uh, barbs. God damn it, I wish I had a fucking silvery barb. <laughs> Don't you wish that Una took like another level of bard? <laughs> she does save, but she does take two points of piercing damage from your cockatrice. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah. Do uh, you have anything else? Your bonus action or anything? Uh, for my bonus action, I will draw a card. Uh, yeah, I'll just draw a card. Okay, and you can make another Constitution saving throw at the end of your turn for me, please. Oh, uh, what happened to my deck? Uh, I think I hit it. Let me put that back on there. <laughs> my bad. Uh, and uh, there we go. <laughs> We're gonna use a uh, lucky on that one. Okay. Oh, shut okay. up. 
<laughs> what is happening? Uh, and I are not playing in your favor today. We're taking the eight. How are you? Wait, how do you have to do another one? So uh, this one is just to see if you can break the effect. Uh, it, wow. it doesn't doesn't further this this turn yet. Uh, all right, so you are still restrained, Nichek, uh As we go to Avril's turn, what do you do, Avril? Uh, actually, yeah, what, what do you do right off the right off the bat? <laughs> um, so seeing Nichek now starting to get frozen. The wolf frozen, um, and him having just resisted resisted effect by looking at it, he kind of puts two and two together. So object interaction, um, he's fully taking off the top of the decanter of endless water, and then as an action, I'm using my control water to create a wall of highly reflective ice in between us and this gorgon. Highly reflective eyes. I'm trying to make a mirror. <laughs> I got yeah. you. Mirror of water. I got wall. you. Um. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna need a check for this one. I just gotta figure out what that check is gonna be. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh. I'm feeding my cat. I also heard mention that she's not immune to petrification. <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, You're pulling so, the shield. <laughs> what I'm going to have you roll is going to be intelligence based. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Because that's where crafting mechanics come from. And you're essentially making a mirror right now. But it's going to be a sleight of hand check with your uh, intelligence modifier instead of your dexterity modifier. Yep, same modifier so it works out. Kenko Recall. No. All right. I can't do Kenko Recall on that because I'm not proficient so I hand. Oh. Well. Oh, stealth and sleight of hand are the same modifier too. Okay. Uh, so. Really? Yeah, I got a plus two. Plus two, yeah. No, my my dex is 14, my intelligence is 14, and my wisdom is 14. So I was setting your DC as the same as her saving throw DC, which is 14. So unfortunately, you do create a wall of ice, but it's not reflective of enough to cause the effect to happen back at her. But it was a good good shot. <laughs> it was close. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm going to run away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, but I'm not passing anybody, so I'm just at the back of the pack, like, all right, go, 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 go. I don't know how long that's going to hold up for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, does Avril pick up the wolf, or does he leave it there because it's a fuzzball? I don't care about the fuzzball. <laughs> Oh no, because some of your characters. <laughs> yeah, it's not a real wolf though, and I know this. Okay. Yes. Do you, do you pick remember up... when we had to do you remember when we had to go check the same Do you I pick do. up the knee check? You did <laughs> notice he was uh kind of stuck. Oh yeah, knee check. Oh yeah, I'll grab knee check. Yeah, knee check's feet are stuck. Yeah, I just toss him over my shoulder. This might hurt. Poink. Like, <laughs> uh, Avril, can you roll me um, 2d6? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nine hit points is what your ice is going to have right now. Uh, she's going to use a claw. On the eyes. Okay. That is a 14 to hit. Uh, that is uh, da, 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 going to have an AC of 13. So that is going to hit. 
So it's going to do a total of. Why is it not rolling now? Not rolling the damage. I'm just going to do it manually. Uh, five. Uh, okay, one D eight. Okay, it deals exactly nine damage on its uh, first claw attack. Uh, so it is able to break the ice. Uh, it is going to move away from the cockatrice, so you'll get an opportunity to attack there in each other. Go. Uh, 11 is going to miss, unfortunately. Uh, Fair. Don't let this be the one thing we can't run away from. We're really good at running away. <laughs> so it is going to move there. She's got... Two more attacks. Uh, Look here, lady. I will fuck you up if I have to. I was being nice before. Uh, so the first one is going to be uh, a snaky, snaky hair attack <laughs> for a 16 to hit on you, Avril. Nope. Okay. And then the final attack is going to be a constrict which is going to be on Una with an, a 16 to hit. A shield. Shield, all right. It is shielded. Uh, you guys both save on your attacks, and uh, that is all she can do. Uh, Zix, you are on the, the ship. Uh, you're still like within a range of your allies, which is still close to the enemy. But uh, you are on the ship, and you are haven't looked yet. What do you do? I think you might be muted, Zix. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm muted, but I was also was reading. Um. Okay. <laughs> I... uh, okay, this might be a horrible idea, but uh, I want to pivot the ship uh, and then kind of try to get the front cannon at an angle where it's over Avril and uh, Nichek and fire straight point blank right at the creature. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can most certainly use the ethereal cannon. Uh, do you have access to that uh, sheet I pulled up, right? Yeah, that's what I was just reading off of. So it says, as an action before the spell ends, you can command the ship to unleash a volley of ethereal cannon fire in a 300-foot line, or long, 40-foot uh, wide line. <laughs> uh, each, each creature in the line must succeed on a dexterity saving there or take 8d10 force damage. I'm just like, so I'm just like you would only hold giant cannon directly <laughs> in her face. Uh, let's see what happens. So I think the way that is worded, I think the the minimal amount of uh, collateral damage you could do would be to hit me check and still hit her. <sighs> Wait until my turn, and then you you could probably do it. As an action before the spell ends. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I'll hold my action to fire the cannon. And I'll just yell out, everybody out of the way! And I'll hold my action. Can we okay. flavor that when it's your your ship and you use that, the dragon fires out of its mouth? Yeah, <laughs> yes, that is absolutely what I'm aiming for. <laughs> yeah, All right. <laughs> 
Avril, you have a good hold of me check, right? Yeah. Good. Vix holds his action uh, for the cannon fire. Una, it is your turn. All right. Una, polymorphine Brecken into a giant eagle. Okay. Uh, hang on. I, can, I need to mark it on my sheet here. Otherwise, I will forget. Um, and once she does that, Una is going to jump onto Brecken. Okay. Um... And that's all Una's doing for her turn. But Brecken is going to fly over, grab Avril and Nichek with the talons, and fly them to the ship. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Avril and Nichek. Okay. Uh, that's why I was asking if Avril had a good grip on Nichek. I do. So, Brecken would be grabbing Avril, who's holding the check. She should have, she should have, as a giant eagle, enough strength to grab all three of us, or hold all three of us. I'm just trying to make sure this bottle of soul water I have doesn't spill. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do, uh, Una, is for mm-hmm. your, the giant eagle form of Brecken right now. Yes. I need a Athletics check with disadvantage. Okie dokie. <sighs> Athletics. The DC is 14. It's her oh. saving throw DC. You got this. Come on! Fuck! 12. She grabs Avril, and who is grabbing knee check, but unfortunately is not able to take off out of the, the range of the the uh lady <laughs> could could i use my magical guidance to help i uh, use the action to just push knee check in their claws and then shake my way out uh well it's unfortunately not your turn yet avril so plus there i use my reaction to that uh i'm gonna say no i think that'd be more like a shove that'd be like a full action type of oh. situation oh. And you use Bardic Inspiration on her. Uh, so what? What did you? What does that um, spell do? Una? Uh, magical guidance. Uh, when you make an ability check that fails, you can spend one sorcery point to re-roll the d20, and you must use the new roll potentially to turn the failure into a success. Ooh, this That's, is Brecken, though, isn't it? It is Brecken. Yeah, it's yeah. Technically Brecken, so I don't okay. think that would work. That's why I asked. <laughs> Yeah, did you use Bardic Inspiration on Brecken? I didn't, but I also I w- didn't use my bonus action. If you have a bonus action left, which you, which yeah. you do, uh, you then can't, yes, I, I will, will allow you to do that. All right, okay. then I will use Bardic Inspiration on her. You need a two, dog. <laughs> need a two. All right. How's the three sound? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, you... Uh, <laughs> You feel the the stopping of the like Nichek stuck to the ground, oh. and you're just like, "Come on, Brecken, you get this!" And then oh, he's yeah. thrusted out of the ground. However, <laughs> make some opportunity attacks. Okay. Honestly, I'd rather take opportunity attacks than you know, all of us getting caught by this fucking thing. And Una didn't do a. Sh- anything involving the souls so it's like she's pure innocent in this moment other than watching y'all do that opportunity <laughs> attacks or an opportunity attack you gotta make some attacks because she's uh, got two she's got two different attacks she's got the snakes and she's got her tail i should rephrase that it's an opportunity attack and she is also taking a legendary action at the end of oh mm-hmm. shut I knew up it. i knew it <laughs> hey, uh, it, is, it is the end una, of the round una is all happen. right to specify yeah. where everyone's at avril and avril and nichek are in the talents una is on brecken's back she is not going to be able to reach una okay she... that that's why i was specifying just in case she has fair game for uh brecken as a giant eagle uh, Avril and Nichek. Bring it on! And Una's shield is also still up. <laughs> what do you wear now? Look at that. So the sneak, snaky hair uh, is going to go for Brecken. Okay. With a 26 to hit. 
It hits. That is 4d12 plus 5 damage. I hope she has enough She's to withstand that. 26 hit points. That is not oh. great. Ugh. That is not great. <laughs> Did you say 4d12 plus 5? 4d12 plus 5. That is correct. 4d12. Yeah, that's why we're good at running away. We need to get the hell out of here. Uh, okay. That is a three, seven. That's 12. She's got one more to roll. That is 16 plus five. That is 21 points of damage for Brecken. Oh, she still got she still got five hit points. And she is going to claw. Oh. Bring it on! Couldn't hit me if you tried. It's not trying to hit you. Actually, <laughs> you you she, hear you hear Una go, come on, girl, you got this. Me. You got she this. Is act, she is actually gonna grapple or uh, constrict uh, her, uh melee attack against Avril. Oh. God damn it. That is a 17 to hit. I think that, that misses. <laughs> I got a 28 tries, AC. <laughs> she tries to constrict to no avail. You guys are able to make it out of the AO no! and get to the ship. <laughs> uh, she's still coming. So uh, as you land on the ship in a haste, runner, uh, you can go ahead and fire your cannon because fuck it. Yeah. As, yeah, as you soon, see uh, like a beam of clear, energy start to yell. build toward the, <laughs> the end of the cannon. It has like a flame-like look quality to it, but it comes out looking like uh, cy like Cyclops eye beams out of the, yeah. the mouth of the dragon. <laughs> um, 8d10. Okay. Come on. Roll high. Oh, no. 49. Whoa. That's terrible. That's Three a lot of one. terrible. That's so bad. Okay. Well, let that happen. Three ones, three threes. Yeah. I don't, I don't have to control them. That's There's only four. one 10 in there. Damn. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, uh, B bursts out, hits her, whatever, whatever happens. She does get blasted. Uh, I don't. Is there a saving throw to that? A dexterity yeah, save, it's right? Dex yeah, dexterity. So yeah. I don't know what the the DC on it is though. I can fight our ship. Oh. <laughs> 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 Fucking Avril. <laughs> Avril's like I could fight our ship. <laughs> uh. I'm going to make it a 17. 10, 10 plus its strength modifier. So we'll do 17. That works. Uh, he got a nat one. Yes. <laughs> he, is, he is blasted. Uh, what, what did that do again? I I forgot. Uh, it just does. Oh, here, actually. I think I can. I got it right here. Uh, oh, for some reason, it sent to DM. Uh, as an action for the spell ends, you can command the ship to unleash a valley of cannon fire, yada, 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 uh, 80, 10 force damage. That's uh, it. You can make this stack three times. So that reading that that way, uh, that it sounds like a multi attack. So you get three of those, I believe. Oh well, yeah, because it's supposed to be like magic missile or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, can I just count that as the second one? So I clicked on it. Yep, that'll work. I like forty-four way better than twenty-nine. Yep. <laughs> uh, then I'll fire again. Nice. Okay. Click the ability. Don't freaking do the dice thing. All right. So that is twenty-nine plus forty-four plus just forty-three. Boom! 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 <laughs> Eighty-seven, a hundred. That was 87 more. That's definitely bloodies her for sure. She gets fucking blasted. Uh, what is your next move, Runner, as you're commanding the ship with everybody on board? 
yeah, if I can, if I can, I'm bolting. We're like, as fast as this thing is going to go, we are jetting out of here straight up and out. All right. Uh, I'm going to take you guys back to the uh, map page here. And I think oh, this is where... hi, Cerberus. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Wrong oh, map. no. <laughs> oh, God. Wrong map. <laughs> uh, this guys, is where you guys... Off of God. This is where you guys are at. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, that's what we'll go ahead and end today's <sighs> session. A narrow like one god with another one to come. Yeah. Uh, well, it wasn't like we weren't going to piss off a god regardless, so. <laughs> yeah, but the the problem, the god that she said the name of was the one whose palace we need to get through to find the portal to get back to the world of the living. Well, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh... You want to make friends with a fun the guy that's like the god of deception that doesn't sound like a great idea either nope i'm full of great ideas <laughs> just roll it just roll it with the punches <laughs> maybe we smash the ship through the palace right into the portal is that a possibility only one way to find out we might lose the ship if that happens. speed We'll Same find part. out next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is going to get weird. Let's, uh, let's, go. <laughs> let's do it.